Earth 2020. Society is in ruins, and a virus runs rampant among the world's humble citizens. They are lost. In these dark times, three wayward nerds cross paths at the House of India and realize they are destined to be friends. And so they be. This is their story. The story of the side quest. Welcome back to the Side Quest Podcast. My name is Matt. I'm, I'm finishing a burrito. <laughs> I'm BJ. I'm just. I was just really wanting to hear what you had to say first. Oh well, <clears throat> about a week ago. I texted Luke, and I was like, hey, you going to play Fortnite this season? And he was like, no. I was like, oh, okay, I'd really like to play with you, but that's fine. Was that during the OG stuff? No. Oh. That was when the new stuff started. Okay. And then, last night, I log on to Fortnite, and the only other person that's online is Luke Blackwood. I got roped into playing, not zero build, by the way, so I was having a shit time with it. But I got roped into playing with some people at work, and they were like, "No, we don't play zero build." And I'm, I'm, I hated, I hated the entire time because everybody, everybody's building. And I'm like, "Dude, I haven't built since uh, before zero build, so I have no idea what I'm doing." So I, I just kind of was like riding the wave, and I'm like, just talk, talking shit about work stuff. Mm. But yeah, so I actually do want to play with you guys. It's a really good season of Fortnite. Like, I haven't done any of the Lego or the. Guitar Hero shit yet, so the Guitar Hero stuff feels <laughs> yeah. like the most lackluster, just because it's just a rhythm game. It di- apparently, uh, it didn't harmonics the like developers of Guitar Hero actually do it. Yeah, which is kind of cool if you think about it. And they, uh, I I think someone has already <laughs> come out with a macro for like Guitar Hero controllers. Well, they can... were saying I saw the 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 headline that was like, yeah, we want it to be feasible, and I'm like, that's actually really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Well, they bought the studio. Did Epic did? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And apparently, they're trying to um, install drive, like make drivers, so that you can plug and play your uh, Guitar Hero controllers. I wouldn't be shocked if they just add a Guitar Hero section to Fortnite from this point forward because they now have what Rocket Rally. Which I mean, is the, the racing uh, bit. The festival thing is basically just that. Yeah. Well, that's insane, but like, have it be like a thing. <laughs> Except I, what I've seen from the Guitar Hero shit is it's kind of it's kind of fucked because there's like certain free tracks and they and you, change. And you, yeah, you have to buy tracks. You have to buy tracks. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. The best I mean, part is like for, I pay like you know how much was Guitar Hero when it was coming out? Sixty dollars, probably same as everything else. Okay. Well, but, maybe more <laughs> if you had to buy the, the the guitar with it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But still, you got, I mean... One time buy and you got, like... Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy DLC tracks later if you wanted. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I, I mean, for for a, for a one-time event, this is probably really cool. It's definitely very predatory that they're like, nah, but pay for all this music. I, I, I don't like think any of this st- is a one-time thing, though. Oh, is it Because not? They're, they're heavily pushing... Like, they changed the whole shop page to be like, all right, this is the section for songs. I saw that, yeah. This is the section for cars, which the racing mode is really fucking fun. Okay. I, I'd be down to play with you guys. I'd just, uh, you know, do some zero build, try the racing hey, B- stuff. BJ, just shoot me an invite. <laughs> All right. Shoot me a text. I will. I'm already level, like, 56 in the battle pass. I'm Fortnite level. battle pass. I'm level 2. I just shit out my ass. There's an official remix of that song with that in it. Like, officially released on Spotify and everything. Yeah, the, the, you'd be surprised about a f- other songs on Spotify. I know there's, like, joke songs and shit, but the fact that that, that girl had, like, a legit 18 song... 18 Naked Cowboys! <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you that, like, any time when Kevin was living here, and it was at, during, like, times where I knew, like, where he wasn't working full-time, um, and so I'd be on my Spotify on my phone, and then it would, like, stop, and I'm like... That's weird. So I would look on my phone and it would say, oh, it's playing on your home speakers because it's just one account. Yeah. And so I realized Kevin was playing Spotify in the house. 
And so I would just always play Ram Ranch and like a bunch of other those songs. And uh, it was good times. And then because there would be you'd be like listening to John Denver or something. And then it would be <laughs> 18 naked cow. <laughs> there was one time where Kevin just in all caps texted me Ram Ranch, brother. We were driving around one day and you did that to him. And then he texted you Ram Ranch really rocks. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> Ranch really rocks. <laughs> so, dude, I I can't wait to shit on the game awards. Let's get into. Yeah, it. you were feeling sick. So, so prefaces. I I did not watch the game awards all the way through. I didn't I didn't have come to watch it. watch a uh, watch spoiler. Party. Not worth it. <coughs> yeah, I was I was watching like another streamer's reaction just so I could like not have to sit through shit that I didn't want to sit through and just I could hear someone make jokes and I'm like, all right, cool. And I was at work like doing all the counting money and whatever else, just having that on the side. And I still didn't finish it. I was like, I'm bored. Uh, but I, I, I got sick literally the day after I like, so Tuesday I was here Wednesday. I woke up with like a little bit of a throat and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck me. God dang it. And so I, I go through, I'm like, maybe, maybe it's just like a simple thing. Wake up Thursday morning. I feel like shit awful. And I'm like, I have to open the store today. I'm not going to this game more thing. I don't want to get these guys sick. I still have a little bit of the sniffles, but I'm pretty much <coughs> over. Now he's got it. Shit. Uh, no, I, I just smoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> Fat but uh, I, I am, I'm feeling a lot better. I can actually function. Like I, it was bad. Like there was a point where like the the Thursday night, like I was like, all right, I'm, I'm heading off to bed. Well, like whenever I texted you guys, like I'm just gonna rest. I'm not gonna watch Game Awards, whatever. And I, I laid in bed, went to sleep, and within an hour, I woke up and I was like burning up, like hot, sweating, like my both my noses stopped up. Uh, my my throat is so fucking like just like I'm like I'm gonna fucking die. And so like I had to like take Nyquil and do all this other shit. Yeah, it well, sucked. Well, Thursday was a pretty crazy day for me. So, me and Carmen had tattoos to get, and on our way there. We hit a deer. Oh my gosh. And uh, it busted up my car. Uh, at least the grill and like the passenger headlight. It still runs and drives. It, like, so what happened is like, hit the deer. Didn't even check. I didn't even check. I pulled over and was like, is the car okay? And it was leaking and stuff like that. Ugh. And I was like, oh no, that's the radiator. And I realized it was just the washer fluid. And I was like, we're good. And I know that Kevin lives really close to the tattoo shop. So I was like, we're going to head towards Columbia. If we need to call AAA, we can park it at their house, do whatever. If not, if the car's okay, we'll just go get tattoos. Yep. So we got tattoos, and all, the whole time I'm like, still like, I mean, I'm shook. I mean, yeah, you hit a deer. Yeah, and yeah. then my car got fucked. So, uh, I mean, it's it runs a drive, and that's all I need. I'm like pretty, like, pretty simple. My window, right, you know, doesn't work. My, my cooling doesn't work. I'm okay with that. As long as the thing drives. Yeah, 100%. And uh, so we got tattoos. Then on our way back, we picked up some some pizzas, and uh, we watched Game Awards, and it was a good time. I mean, it really was, just because we're all hanging out. Carmen watched it with us. Yeah. Was it was it as long as last year's? Yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel quite as long, just because they structured it a little bit better, but... Well, it, I, I want to go ahead and just put my biggest complaint from what I saw, is that no one got the fucking talk. Yeah. Unless you were did a celebrity. You, so, did you see the tweets I about would, the pictures that people in the stands or in the I saw, audience? I saw the, like, the, the screen that it says, was like, hurry it up. Or it's like, or please like, hurry yeah. up or please, like, like yeah. finish up type shit. Yeah, it, that and sucks. And even, even Game of the Year got that. So, it's... But the, the night was was <laughs> fine, and it, it was... We, were like, recovered, and we had a good time, and got to hang out and stuff like that. But Game Awards, I think, sucked. I... I don't know if they've... I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if they've been good for a while. Because, like, last year's was also bad. Yeah. And the the year before that, it was, like, fine. But, like, I feel like they're they're becoming more and more of just a presentation show. Like, oh, we're gonna be the, the new E3 that you get to see cool, you know, reveals yeah, for. Yeah, they, they keep... Instead of the award part of the It needs show. to be 100% centered around developers and the games. Like, I, I like the idea of having, like, developers, like, come up and talk. Like, if you're gonna reveal a game and, like, the developers there, be like, hey, talk about it for, like, a minute or two, sure. But, like, anyone who accepts... I mean, it, at least the Academy Awards doesn't have a single trailer in it. You shouldn't have to... 
speed pass. See, the thing is, I like some of the trailers at the Game Awards, though. Like, I, I think for me, I don't need the... We're giving away 100 Steam Decks. Make I, sure every fucking <laughs> that's second. That's what I was yeah. telling in the text. You were like, what? Were there any dumb commercials? Like, but there was like... 15 different ads about on Steam Decks, like, Lenovo pads. The, like, the hella big sponsors like that. I don't need, like, having a commercial break, sure, whatever. Or, like, doing, like, what was it last year? They had, like, a, a an award that was presented by <coughs> Mountain Dew or some shit. Like, doing something, or Discord. Doing something like that where it's like, hey, this is a sponsored award by this person. And they get, like, find a way to integrate your sponsors in the show, not, all right, let's stop the show so we can talk about our Steam Decks were given away so we can have the Muppets show up and, and talk some shit for uh, five minutes. Like, no, it should be the devs who are on the stage speaking. And that, that should be the case. Like, Neil Newburn, like, basically getting chewed off with this, with the sound. And he still said, fuck it, I'm gonna get my last piece in. I was like, good for you, dog. The, it was also crazy having, like, Christopher Judge be the first thing he's like... Also, I actually just... I hated all of that. Like, you're, like, known for being a guy who just wasted our time. And again, you're like, I'm not going to waste your time. And then he tried to, like, he dissed Call of Duty. Which, I mean, hey. Which was the only good part about it. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Hey. Yeah. I, I, and they were pissed about that. Did you see I, Did I, you see the fucking tweets? They were like, would, like, oh, yeah, people don't fucking play God of War anymore. You're still playing uh, Call of Duty. I will like, say. Well, congrats. They don't play a single-player game after they're finished with the single-player game. There was one again. tweet that resonated with me. It was that... Like, this is the Game Awards. This should be about, like, supporting our fellow developers. And I'm like, okay, fair yeah. enough. Like, we, and because I'll, I'll say that was an overall theme of the Game Awards is that people didn't respect and, and give yeah. the respect to developers that they needed to. It's, it's, you know, so I understand it's like, hey, we're all here to celebrate each other. Let's just play nice. Yeah, except for Call of Duty, though. That's the cool no one I'll, I'll let. No, so I, I mean, I, you I already know my feelings about Call of Duty. I know, yeah, but I, but I disagree 100% with the take you said because it's about Call of Duty. So everything you said about every other game in existence, I 100% agree. It, the rule does not apply to Call of Duty, though. They can get shit on. Story I also inside. wasn't a big fan of Kojima being up there for that long. For a, for like a two-second trailer. Yeah, didn't a two-second trailer with no gameplay. and then. But hey, apparently him and Jordan Peele are making a game. Yeah, that that was weird too. Like, it might. Did you see the the? I saw a TikTok about. By the way, this morning now I'm getting TikToks about other shit. It might be connected to Silent Hill. Well, yeah, I mean, it, clearly in some way it has to be because the the name is okay. two letter PT. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of down though for Jordan Peele being involved. Sure, yeah, but cool. don't make like an eight minute. When, oh, no, no. when yeah, Armored yeah. Core didn't get to, they didn't get to speak. They didn't yeah. get to say anything. That that's another thing. Like, it, like that was ev probably every the, the... award winner. Even if I don't like the award, like even the esports fuckers should get to st say their thing. Everyone who wins a award should get at least two to five minutes to say what they say their piece, and that's that. Like, like be, let them go up and thank their mom I, or their I, wife. Like, I mean, a real way to fix that is just give them a little card. And then let them do their speech, and then the people that won the award can be like, "Also, here's a new game from this studio." Like that would be cool. Yeah, like if if you if you tied it in there, like, "Oh, here's best narrative," and now like Neil Newbern gets to announce a new narrative-driven story game. Because then not only do you have the the honor of winning an award, you get to announce a game for someone else, and people will talk about you for two reasons now. Yeah, I there's definitely I I. I Obviously, I don't know how to run a fucking award show. I'm sure there's a lot of fucking like, oh, he's using this, this, uh, this convention hall or whatever, this, this stage, and he has to pay this much, and so he has to get sponsors. And there's probably a lot of shit that has to go in, but like, I feel like he's going too far with the sponsorships. Well, especially with all the like, celebrities that showed yeah. up, like it almost feels like they're trying to make the only, another. The only one um, that felt worth it was Matthew McConaughey, just because he was in the game that they were promoting. Like, but you didn't see his with, face or hear his yeah. voice. But that that was another thing I was like, because okay, Carmen the whole time was like. That's not Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. That's not his voice. And I was like... Carmen also the whole time was like, when is Nintendo? <laughs> and we were like, what do you want? What do you mean? She's like, I'm staying awake for Nintendo. We were like, there's no guarantee that Nintendo will do anything. And they didn't. <laughs> they did not. Hey, but Pikmin won something. Yeah, it won uh, Best, Best Strategy. Sim. <laughs> Which is Fuck hilarious. you, City Skylines. Yes. <laughs> no! Olimar wins again, baby. <laughs> What is this? The city skyline people are going crazy. Robbing convenience stores, spray painting windows, <laughs> flipping over cars. I, I, Justice for city skylines. <laughs> I think realistically, though, I don't know how they're going to fix it next year. Because I, I, when watching it, I was seeing the security. 
they had like some Marcus Phoenix looking dude just standing there like they had, yeah, they had the, one in each aisle. aisle. Yeah, dude was wait. Apparently that kid tweeted. He's like, I'm on my way, Jeff. I'll see you there. <laughs> and he was there. Quickly like, get to He he was he was Jason there. Jason Statham pit maneuvers his car. Yeah. <laughs> he was apparently there, but he was just interviewing like people on the thing. But he wasn't a part of the game. It was for his own like YouTube channel, or whatever. And then he he was apparently they saw him and like watched him specifically like no you can't get out of your seat unless... yeah of course so i was like yep fair uh but no who was the other guy the 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 you see the the gta sam dude? the sam dude yeah um oh, what did he was he i mean he was there i'm assuming because twisted metal yeah he show. he did announce that twisted metal's getting a season two which is but great we, but we also don't need to hear that at the game awards I mean, it is a I, video, oh, game is a video game. He was presenting the uh, the adaption award, but then he he spent yeah. so much time being like, "Quiet, yeah, Shush, he, stop he, it." Th- there was like stop five it. minutes. It felt like of him like talking to the audience, just being like, "Hey, be quiet. I'm gonna do the thing now. Don't talk now." And it was just like, "Shut the well, fuck up." It just up feels and do like the they're thing. trying to recreate the Keanu Reeves like your beautiful yeah, and moment. It's like, you're not Keanu Reeves. If yeah. you want a Keanu Reeves moment, you gotta get Keanu Reeves back. I'm gonna be honest, hundred percent. You know who they should have gotten up there to, to present that? Idris Elba. Ke- well, oh, actually, yeah, him or Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's no, I mean, I at least on, on on that front, like, yeah, they shouldn't have spoken as often as they did. But like, him having Twisted Metal season two, and then and then presenting the Adaption Award, Matthew McConaughey being in a game and presenting said game, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of cool with like you're here, you're not like Timothy Chalamet just they literally being the presenter. put up a set for Kojima, yeah, for Jordan Peele to walk out. <laughs> yeah, they they had a little slow creaking door for them to walk through one at a time. <laughs> like, the, like I w- there was a couple. Well, to, oh. to be fair, that's that's Jeff's fucking hard on for Kojima that he pres- he'll he'll do that every year. You, he could have the best, most immaculate award show that's perfectly paced and everything. He's still somehow going to make sure Kojima is like the king of that award show. Yeah, it does not matter. It I just, would not. I would not be shocked if he. Which is crazy makes, because he hasn't made a good game since 2015. <laughs> and so it's, some it could just argue feels that that wasn't his game. That these developers, the the, develop, the people actually winning awards, they get to say shit. Especially, yeah, we, we mentioned this that FromSoft won your game of the year last year, got their got their acceptance speech hijacked, and you just didn't let him speak this year. It's yeah, like it's bullshit. It is. Well, and then I will say I was really. I mean, there were a couple of the wards where I was like, you know, Armored Core winning, and then Cyberpunk getting best community support like meant a lot to me. Yeah, that... I, they they really have. And then their speech was really good. They were like, "This is all because of the fans. Like, we do this because of the people who love this game." The, all they were obligated to do was make sure the game ran, and they would. And most companies just would have dipped. A hundred percent. Instead, it's, they were like, Let's they, fix just, it. "They deserved it's, it, and they yeah. won it." And I'm it really feels happy like for that. They they were like, "All right, you guys." Voted for us for the award. Now you get to fuck Pan Am. Yeah, here's that, that update. I, I saw that and, and I immediately like there my on on my Xbox like yeah Cyberpunk has a 60 gig update and I went. You know what the uh, Ooh, sleepover quest is called? What I want to stay at your house. Oh fuck! You made me cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna go through some Cyberpunk shit. Just like reload an old save. And just yeah, because I, I, I spent 120 hours on this most recent playthrough, <laughs> so I'm just gonna reload that. Yeah. I still need to finish Phantom Liberty, but I'm I'm honestly I'm glad that Phantom Liberty is getting the love it, it was it was getting like the, the fact that it got nominated as much as it did. Mm-hmm. I think puts it up there because remember when uh, Witcher Three Blood and Wine was getting nominated for awards like that. Yeah. Where I was like, oh yeah, this is just a big enough DLC that it's basically its own thing. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, when you play the, the Game of the Year edition or whatever, you can just skip the main story and go directly play, yeah. to... They're like, we recommend you start at at least level 30, but you can play it if you want. Yeah. It's like, fucking go. We don't, we don't care. I, I again, it's it's a tra- it's a travesty that these people didn't get to speak as long to you. But I did like Neil's speech about... <laughs> You know, Baldur's Gate being able to give voices to people who whose voices aren't heard and it was really heartfelt. Yeah, he had some serious drip. Yeah, he was wearing like, like a, a full kimono, kimono and, and the shoes. Yeah, I saw the TikTok of him. Like, what's your what's your fit? And he's like, I got these these like uh, samurai type or whatever shoes, Japanese inspired. I've got a kimono with like the, the all this stuff. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dog! It's the Game Awards. You didn't have to go that hard, dude. It was it was hard. Did and you then see the uh, the TikTok that he posted the next day. Oh, the, the, you won in, best. Uh, in Disneyland. Like, and he's looking at his, his buddy. He's like, so. Uh, he, uh, and th- well, and then the, the, um, not the CEO, but the, 
the director game uh, in, in f uh, full, full chest piece plate armor. armor. <laughs> yeah, love that. <laughs> clank 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 clank. He must have sat. He must have had to sit so fucking straight for the whole thing. Yeah, it must have. Yeah, just to. But it's it's a real Chad move because he was like, I know I'm gonna win this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like let's 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 be honest here. Spoiler alert! Like, I, if I knew I wasn't Baldur's gonna win, Gate. I would have just worn like sweats. Like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to be comfortable. But fucking Baldur's Gate guaranteed the win on that one. A hundred percent. Like there, like there is no like, and, and if Baldur's Gate wasn't there, I realistically think it was either going to to Zelda or Alan Wake. Apparently, that's about it. I would have been pretty pissed if it went to Alan Wake. <laughs> uh, Spider Man didn't win Say, anything. Spider Man did shit. Seven yeah. nominations, nothing. Dude, I saw one that was like, Tears of the Kingdom won, wins one award, and here's 60 seconds from Spider-Man, and it's just it's just a QTE like cinematic. And I'm like, this that just proves the, the point. Less, yeah. This just proves your point, is that 60 seconds of your game, which is QTE, looks great, when like, Tears of the Kingdom, yeah. Here's 60 seconds of Tears of the Kingdom where you can build a real functioning Gundam and just run through and ransack bosses. Yeah, I know which game I'm picking. I uh, I, I did want to mention they had this one section of the show that was like, all right, we're just going to shotgun blast a couple Final Fantasy announcements and do a live show of the Rebirth theme. And that was pretty incredible. What uh, what were the musical stuff? Because I know you said Rebirth and then Hellblade had one. Yeah, they did uh, one for Hellblade. Also had vocals. They had like the big... They did like, the Alan Wake drums. with dancing. Oh, which did they was do Herald of Darkness? Which was lame as hell. The no, dance... fuck you. It's no, the best thing no, ever. Watch no. the dance routine. It's really terrible. Oh, no. The, the dance routine's in the game. I know. It's terrible. It's amazing. It no, was like... It's, it's, le it's legitimately... I got to the part in that game. That that's happening, and I Bro, was like, stop. "This is great." You know those people <laughs> yeah. that say they like metal, but they only listen to Ghost. Yeah, it felt like See people that. like that made yeah. that performance. The the band that does it is like a, is musicians that are hired to do music in Remedy games. So they've done it in both. Alan he Wakes did have an eye control. Yeah, the whole point that is that. The so they're like cool. Crush Forty, but worse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's cool. I like that they actually did that though. Yeah, I liked that the the musical performances weren't just like, oh, it's Mega the Stallion. <laughs> I I mean, and I, the the Rebirth one was really cool because it was showing all the Golden Saucer play stuff in the background nice. and Aerith singing on top of the actual mm -hmm. vocalist. I'm wondering what we're, how that's gonna change and if it's gonna be just Aerith or if if because I know, apparently I was looking into stuff like that. Apparently, uh, your the affinity meter is a thing again where it can the the play will change depending on who your affinity is high with same with the golden saucer date and everything else mm -hmm. so i'm like sick team is going with me the whole time got it uh but uh in the golden saucer date by the way the only person that cloud willingly goes with is barrett so that feels like the canon option it let it what was the, i think i might have sent it to you but there's like a meme comic where it's it's yuffie Aerith, and tifa like arguing over who's cloud's gonna take and it shows and it's just opposite. him and it's, the boys it's him red 13 and barrett with like like all the like like Di like the disneyland hats but it says like golden sauce they're just like whoa hell yeah. yeah that's canon definitely but yeah those were really good announcements and then the 16 dlc reveal which, was great uh, which i have played and I still haven't beaten because Omega has kicked my ass. It's the I've, Leviathan I've, one that's coming out later, yeah. right? Yeah, so this one is like a short one. Basically, it just explains who the Fallen were and why they aren't around. That's there. That, and it's very short. But uh, it's fucking hard. Any, any Final Fantasy game that has an Omega boss fight is meant to be like, this is the super boss that's going to take you a long time. And it, I've died 16 times. At least it's not the fucking turtle from 15. Did, doesn't that if you're at least it's not the boss from Balthi it's, at least it's not Balthius. At least Balthius was fun every time <laughs> I tried it. No, the turtle from fifteen is the worst because I think doesn't it take if you're if you're at the at if the, you're at max 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 level max damage it takes two and a half hours. If and it, what yeah yeah the and and because Conan O'Brien I remember seeing Conan O'Brien do it with Elijah Wood by the way and uh, they were playing it and they were like yeah this this uh, this boss fight. At the current level you're at, will take you two real world days to beat, and it's like, f and Conan, rightfully so, is like, who the fuck? Who, why? Wait, that is so. Tell dumb. me about this boss. It's a giant turtle mountain. It's an end game super boss <coughs> that is a mountain that you see through the whole game, and then at one point it wakes up and it's been a turtle the whole time, and they're like, let's fucking kill it. 
Is it? Do you have to beat it to finish no. the game? No, it, you finish the game and then you unlock the turtle. It's it's what well, is is it when you beat the game or is it like you have to go through far enough in the, the I hunts? I never got it until new game like plus okay, like yeah. when I reloaded a save after beating Cause, it because uh, yeah it's it's one of the hunts you have to do and it's like it's like it's just a giant question mark and they're like there's like earthquakes what's going on and you hit it and like a cutscene that happens where it just rises out of the ground you're like holy fuck and, and yeah, it really does at max everything two hours. What, what dictates that. It's it has the highest health pool in the game. It's the biggest health sponge in video game history. No, really. And like you can summon during that fight too, and it's still that's still not gonna like cut it down hard enough. I was severely under leveled for the last bit of the make the car fly quest, and I summoned like eighteen different times. Aranea kept jumping out of the thing to help me, and it still took hours. I. When I finally beat it, I was literally like, I'm not playing Final Fantasy 15 ever again. That was the last time I had, like, it, because I had beaten FF15 for Royal Edition, and that's when I beat it. That's the DS, one where you're, like, with I the dipped. boys yeah. in the car in the desert. Yeah. yeah. Road trip with the boys. Speaking of which, that version of Stand By Me still, go to still plays in my hotel. Like, it just plays over I mean, the hotels. like the normal, like the song, like the. To yeah, but stand the, by me. the Florence and the Machine version was made for that game. And they released a single with Final Fantasy 15 on the like the album art, and it's just so weird. Every time I'm at work and I hear that version, it gives me like fucking whiplash. It pulls me out of a trance. <laughs> I really wish 15. I want 15 to get like a director's cut because there's a lot of shit in that game that. Got Somebody it. needs to remake 15 with all of 16's combat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the one that we were all excited for was Blade. Did not see that coming. Yeah. Except. The only, I mean, the only, the only. I, I, I realized what it was when it happened was the second. It's because it, it said like Marvel at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then we we're. I was like, what the heck? And then when he showed the teeth, I was like, it's oh, oh no! And then it all happened so quickly where it shows like his swords and like, and I was like, it's J Law, it's the J Law. Ah! It, it happened so fast from them like showing his teeth. And uh, it was amazing. The only the only inclination I had that this was a thing was that there was a leak that Xbox has a Marvel deal. That was it. There was no information on who the character is. Well, I wish that when I sent it in the stuff. text, when you send like links on iPhone, it gives you a little preview. So I, I, I was mad when I sent it in our group chat because the preview the thumbnail. Is yeah, and delayed. I was like, I was I was hoping Luke would just click it and then he'd be like, oh. Oh, and be able to watch it without seeing like the title or anything. I mean, YouTube that, that, should have like a surprise feature where you can just be oh, like, like a surprise link, hide all the info. That would be, dude. YouTube, get on that. It it it, it would make it would make jump scare videos so much funnier. Yeah. Uh, no, it it dude. it that's a that was a great reveal just because you you see it and you're like Marvel, you're like okay, because immediately I'm like, well, when I saw that it was Blade, obviously from the because yeah, I was like looking, I'm like I might I might have guessed like oh Wolverine. Like, yeah, I thought next, it was going like, to be a Wolverine yeah. trailer, and I was like, why is he in France? And, the, and then it's like, why is he black? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, they really changed it a lot, huh? Yeah. No, but uh, I'm that, that's probably the most hype. That Honestly, that one and the Matthew McConaughey game were the only two that I was like, that were like new reveals, and I'm like, that looks cool. And only just because I'm like, oh, cool, third-person action sci-fi game. I'm cool with that. And then Blade. Yeah. And everything else that I've seen was just like. Which apparently is in third person. Yeah. The, the Dishonored devs were like, yep, it's going to be third person. Which makes sense if you're going to be swinging a blade around <laughs> and doing, like, doing blade shit. I'm, blade I'm shit. It's got to be in third person for sure. I'm wondering what, the, what their combat, though, is going to be because they... It, they kind of made it sound like it was going to be, like, stylish action to me. I'm hoping because so Combos, far, so far nobody in, in uh, Bethesda has made good action combat. I'm going to be honest with you. I like, hope it's just Metal Gear Rising but with Blade. I mean, hell that, yeah, they're definitely gonna do stealth options because this is dishonored. Like that, that team, that's what they know. So that's gonna be stealthy, and like you're gonna be able to use all the vampire powers and do crazy shit. Or maybe it's not. A hundred percent, it will be. I can guarantee you, it'll be stealthy. What if they break out? They did with Deathloop. Okay, so maybe now with Blade. I'm not saying they're not gonna, but I'm saying they're gonna add stealth elements to it. It's 100% gonna have stealth elements to it. Because he's a fucking vampire. Granted, Daywalker. Milk are rising has stealth elements, and I only really figured it out like my, <laughs> third, second, playthrough. my second playthrough. It's in the sewers where you have to go up against those gorilla guys. Mm -hmm. You gotta walk across the pipes at the top. Uh huh. And then jump down. Yeah. But that you do get a dope cutscene from that. 
Yeah. It's like where All, he like there, there's lands one, there's, on his foot blade. Ugh. The the one moment where they're like, hey, you should probably stealth kill is because he's like two guys standing like with the guns pointed to the civilian. And if you <laughs> save him, you stab one guy, the other guy turns around and starts shooting, and it goes, and it, you get the check mark going, hey, you did the side mission. And then it immediately starts swinging, you'll cut the civilian in half. I've never been able to save a civilian in that game. I can't fucking do it. I just, it, 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 I've only done one, and it's that one. And then once, and I killed him at the end because he was right there as I was doing a sick ass combo. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh shit. Oh, he well. gets chopped into 18 different cubes. <laughs> yep. I think when that happened, I just immediately went, because I didn't understand that the slow, like the slow time was only meant for well, like certain things. for like the specific yeah, thing. The, yeah, you're like, hey, Matt, you actually do more damage with like your. Y and X attack, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So I just went up to him and went, <laughs> "Yeah." But yeah, game awards. <clears throat> do better. Do better. Yeah, hundred percent. Do we want to go through the winners or? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, just make it quick. All right. All right. Uh, I'm I'm going through just random at this point. Uh, player's voice was Baldur's Gate three, so that was a fan vote. Makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. Best adaptation, Last of Us. Hell also yeah, makes yeah. sense. By the way, uh, <coughs> Liana Mormont just died, and I'm really fucking sad about it. Jorah died. Jorah fuck. Jorah held out though. Jorah was a G to the end. A hundred percent. Oh, also before we he, he uh, the Night King died, he was like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It, it was like 15 minutes before the Night King died. I was like, and here comes Arya off the top rope. And that's exactly what she did. Dude, a hundred. And that, that like, oh, what a move. What That was a move that, that uh, she learned from somebody. I forgot who it was. Wasn't it uh, Daria Naharis? No, no, it was, it was the, from it, the chick. It was the, 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 ro- the Rogue One. The Rebel Rogue, Girl. Yeah, the Rebel <laughs> The Rogue One girl, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it was sweet. Yeah, go on. It was alright. No, that fight was fucking cool. Nah. Even the whole thing was good because we had I turned off all the lights. And also, <laughs> I'll defend Tyrion for the crypt shit. Okay, there was nowhere else they could have gone. There was a billion dead people. Dude, when the Night King. R- Right. Oh, and then the the dead bodies under the crypt. They should the- they should have made a bigger deal out of zombie Ned Stark though. Should have. I, I will. I will Except say that he, they didn't have his head. Oh well, yeah, no, yeah, well, yeah. Well, he wouldn't have been really. I don't know if just well, bones well, do, can re- well, I was, I was reincarnate. Gonna say, do they? I think it's got to be a they, body. There was a lot of people down there that was just bones, but it was like a full body. No, they well, then they should have done fucking Liana. Yeah, I was gonna say mom. they should have made a more a, a bigger. Instance of oh yeah, here's Liana. Or like Sansa has the ability to kill one of them, but she fucking can't. But I also mom. I also think that the uh, people like like the big people the, the you know that were like you know the Warden of the North kind of shit were like encased in like stone tombs. So the bodies were just like just like banging on the door, be like let me the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. When the other ones were just like <laughs> like cl- commoners clayed into the walls, like the classic. I mean, it was just like the the catacombs in France, where it's just like a body in the side of the wall. That's true. That makes a lot of I, I, sense. I will just say this: I I don't. The like, first one we saw just like pushed out, and it was like, "What's up?" I don't like Arya killing the Night King for only one reason: that it just makes no sense as to why Jon Snow is even alive now. That was his whole point: is he supposed to be the chosen one, motherfucker guy who does who ends the long night? Well, and doesn't. What? John, John's the one that started that wheel rolling. Like if if he hadn't brought everyone together, Arya never would have come back. It doesn't to matter who kills; he's still the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Doesn't take uh, the, away what, from John. What at matters all. is that life won. A hundred percent. That's yeah. That's like the whole the whole thing is like I don't care who is fighting with us. We need every living person. Okay. Also, there's only like twelve living people now. <laughs> yeah, like the only people that are alive at Winterfell are like Podrick. The main characters. The, uh, the Theon's characters. Dead. Theon's dead. Jorah's dead. Gilly see, might be dead. Oh, did you see the, the TikTok you sent me? Where it's like, oh yeah, I like characters that want to be better. And it's yeah, just I, Theon and I, Jamie I, I did, right I disregard, next to each other. I disregard Theon, but Jamie absolutely. <laughs> 100%. It was Jamie and Theon right next to each other. And I, I looked at it and I went, oh, why we would lost, you? We, the worst loss that we had though was Ed. Yeah, Ed was Gosh, fucking that sad. that one breaks my heart. When when they revived Ed, I was like, how fucking dare you? Yeah. Liana was disrespectful. 
But Liana went out like a fucking badass though. She yeah. killed the giant. Yeah. Single handedly. Mm -hmm. No, I the 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 main reason, like I guess in the grand scheme of things, I don't care who kills the Night King, but it's a small step into what happens with season eight that I'm like by the end of the show, I literally was like, Why did you bring John back? What was the point? Which you'll see oh, later, what? but I was like, I I know tr like narratively it it went nowhere. Cause honestly it could have been anybody else, I'm gonna be honest with you. That could have done anything else that John did. I'll tell you this. I think if they ended it after the battle, that would be good. Even though it, it's really ambiguous as to what happens next. Because Sometimes we only have three more episodes until the end, which is the ludicrous. horse. Ludicrous. Which, but, which by, yeah, three more episodes to the end, and you have to get through arguably like... A bunch of major plot but points. I, I can see those episodes. three episodes being rushed, but the rest of the season with the Night King shit, I felt like has been pretty well paced. It's and it's true I, because John's mission was accomplished. He saved people. He saved the world from the the Night King and and the 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 White Walkers. Like that's it. Doesn't matter who kills him. It's not his job. He was like, I'll fucking do it because I, you know, I'm in like in charge, and uh, you know, it's like. I have the, the burden the, of the reason I say that is book stuff is because it's aggressively foreshadowed that it's John and Night King are gonna fight. But it's it, but it's it's like he because not whole, not technically Bran and Night King. I mean those are the that's, well because no well, Bran is the one who because in, in the same way you say well John brought it all together. Br like Bran is the one who's like kind of you know puppet stringing everything along because of the three but the Night King's shit. coming for him so that's the real one on one duel well because John's the prince who's promised at least in the books it's that's where it's going for is he's the guy Stannis thinks it's him even uh Red Woman is like well it's clearly Stan like, but then it's like no does it's John him. think it's him he's dead currently uh, oh, so but like, but it's all no, the, all the he, stuff. John never thinks he's him. All all that he no he never he thinks is, he's though. him. You know, yeah, well, that, yeah, the best person who's him doesn't think they're him. Uh, but like all the book stuff, like and even like the Winds of Winter like excerpts that have been like published and leaked, it's very like they're pushing towards like John's going to be the one to do it. He's the he's the chosen one character of this story, and he's gonna be the one to fight the Night King. And I think he's gonna die doing it. That's my theory. Is he's gonna die to give up, and then it's gonna be uh, Sansa, Arya, and Bronn having to deal with Cersei and Daenerys and everybody else. That'd be terrible. I, I would. I wouldn't read past that. I think it'd be cool for that. What? Well, because John, I, it, book wise, John is one of the like just central characters. So the show made him the main character. Books, he's still just one of the characters you follow. Well, at least he was. Now he's dead. But, uh, there, I mean, I even went, I, I think book wise, John has the least amount of like book time in the whole like story just because every time they jump, except for when he leaves the wall and goes and meets Egret and stuff like that, that's when he gets the most like screen time. And then, uh, other than that, it's so, like, yeah, there really isn't a main character in the books, which I think is kind of cool. It's just a bunch of different storylines that are happening in tandem with each other each person having a main so it's now starting to coalesce but yeah but yeah the last three episodes of season eight i think are some of the worst there is some cool stuff i think the hound is still pretty cool in the last few episodes um and aria i think i think aria is the only one who consistently stays like well written and well rounded everybody else gets shit on. we did get to see Littlefinger die Fucking finally. That was satisfying. I like seeing uh, Jamie night in. That was very sweet. Yeah. Well, and Jamie just being like, okay, fuck you, Cersei. Yeah. Finally. I also like that little drinking circle that they had where it was like Podrick, Davos, uh, Brian, Tormund, Tormund, Brian, Jamie, and did I ever say Tyrion? Tyrion was there. And Tyrion. And I was like, dream <clears throat> blunt rotation. 100%. Tyrion was like, like, why are we going? Let's keep drinking. And then they're like, we're all Davos out of wine. Davos is like, we have no wine left. <laughs> That's who I know it's a good drinking circle. It's like, we need to keep drinking. We drink it all. Uh, and I Again, also, there's something that at least I have seen in when I first watched Game of Thrones that I don't think we that either was cut or happens after, which is weird. But remember, there's a scene of like, 
like Arya is like, I want to have sex for the first time. Mm-hmm. And then she fucks Gendry. Yeah. There's other people that bang. <sighs> Who else? <laughs> Text it to me. If yeah. it's like hella spoilery, but uh, did, well, did, it, uh, did it's BJ, not hella. But did, it's, did, it's did just BJ like, tell just... you the the like thing where he's talking about Aegon and shit? Did he tell you what I told him? What the whole Aegon naming thing is dumb. Why? Because that's John's brother's name. What? Rhaegar's first son's name is Aegon, and then in the Game of Thrones show, they also just called John Aegon. So if 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 Lyanna would have lived and John would have lived and Rhaegar would have lived. That they means would Rhaegar would have had two Aegons. son, two sons named Aegon. Texted you just in King's Landing, and and like at that point, does this he... happen after the Battle of Winterfell? <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then that's uh, so weird. And then immediately, oh, I think so. And then immediately, it gets completely shit on. Okay. Because remember, you you've seen the rest of the show, and yes. now they ruin that amazing character arc, and it makes no sense, and I hate it, and it's the worst part of the show. Anyway. Uh, As I said, I'd be happy if the show ended here. Yeah, honestly. And be ambiguous. Just, like, just I wonder end, what happens next. And end, then, end here and be like, oh, we might get a sequel. We might not. Yeah, yeah I, I would wait until the books But if, if they, I, I do want them to do sequel series now, because well, I know they had the Arya show planned. And well, I'm all about that. The, once, John's, the, the John, John one, one is, is apparently like, still happening. Is happening. For it's, real? Because uh, it, I think Jimmy Fallon was talking to, to Kit Arrington, I think, for Eternals. And uh, they were, he talked about, so you have a Game of Thrones show, like a sequel. And he's like, I can't talk about it. And it's like, and if it's happening, that means you're NDA and you can't fucking talk about it. Yeah. Versus, no, nah, we're not doing it. Yeah, like, I feel like Kit wouldn't lie about it. I feel like it. But I was looking to see if anybody in like the Game of Thrones cast was like a big gamer to be like, you know, maybe they're not doing anything, and they'd want to be. Is on it a... Grey Worm because he was on? <laughs> yeah, Game Grumps. Yes, yeah. Grey Worm is a. He was on. He was a guest on Game Grumps. Really? Times. Anyways, I was looking to see if anybody I could just send a message to, like, hey, what about like a twenty minute Discord? You know, no, a Zoom call. That uh, I don't care who it is. Anybody would be incredible. A hundred percent. I was looking. I but I Ed the, the first one I looked <laughs> up was uh, was Kit, and he's like he uh, there was like. A, an actual interview where someone was like, do you play any video games? He's like, no, that's not for me. And I was like, fuck. I'm taking my vows. I can't play games. I can't play games. No, but so, well, he's too busy fucking. Yeah. <laughs> giving cunnilingus. Yeah. Being the, <clears throat> the best tongue in the seven kingdoms. <laughs> Him oh. and Podrick have like a, an a, eat a out pussy off. off. A <laughs> pussy eating <laughs> contest. Eat out off. <laughs> well, it would would Padraig be good at eating pussy, or is he just really good with this? Padraig is the most dick. selfless lover that's ever existed. <laughs> he goes to the whorehouse, and they don't make him pay. I'm gonna be honest. I I thought about this the other day because I was like, damn, Sansa's been through the worst with every single like relationship she's been in. Yo, Padraig's just right there. It was it was no. sweet in the it was sweet in the crypt in the crypt when <laughs> she was talking to Tyrion, and she was like, maybe we could have worked out. Yeah. And he, she was like, "You were you were the best one I had," and the, even before when they show up, when when um, Daenerys and like her people show yeah. up to she's, Winterfell, she's happy to see it. Yeah, he's he was like, "I actually do trust Tyrion." And then what was that time that was like, "Oh, even um, who's the Mormon?" We were just talking about him. Jorah. Jorah was like, "He's the smartest fucking guy." In, in the Seven Kingdoms, like his mind. Yeah, she's alone. like, "You're gonna defend the guy that took your job," and Jorah's like, "Yes." Jorah's a homie, like, hundred percent, just one of the best people. Oh, and then yeah. Sam, when he, when she finds out that Daenerys killed her her brother and her dad, or his, yeah, it was brutal. He was like, I have to go, and they just like runs out crying. Ugh. Okay, I I do want to talk because I know the thing we've talked about a bit, and we'll get yeah. back to the awards in a second. But realistically, like. The Jon Snow parentage thing is one of the coolest things in the whole fucking what series. What thing? His parentage. Like, yes. Being Rhaegar and Lyanna's son. Like, yeah. And, be, yeah. and yeah, being like... Because are, are, I don't know if, the, if... We don't know if, if, if in the books they're married, but didn't they marry in the show? Yeah, so yeah. Sam found at the Citadel in somebody's diary... like It was the guy were, that married them. Annulled... Rhaegar's an wedding, Elia's marriage, and then Lyanna and him married, so making John the actual rightful heir. Of the yeah, Iron not Throne. a bastard, not a sand. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not a bastard. He's just he's he should literally just be Aegon Targaryen, but like like that's the coolest fucking thing. Well, because then Sam was like, "Your actual real name's John Sand," 
And he's like, but that's also not your real name. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, technically, you're not a snow, but, you know, still a bastard. But but yeah. actually, yeah. no, I, I still wish they would have changed his fucking name. Except Aegon is a pretty fucking cool name. I will give it that. That's the only reason I'm not like the most. Oh, no, no. It was, it was, uh. It was Bran who told Sam his his last names should be Sand because he's born Dornish, born. Dornish, yeah. Dornish, yeah, bastard. Yeah. Dornish bastard, not well. I guess, but it, I mean, to be fair, if he's Ned's bastard, would or would it be like because if he was born in Dorn, would he still have been a Sand, or is it because he's raised? It's because it's because you're born? the you're you're the well, it's the bastard, so that usually means the dad's not there. I mean, that's like to be well, a bastard. In, in the case means... of Ned, like Ned raising his bastard, be like even though he was born in. Because his dad's not there. He's a bastard because he doesn't have a dad. What? So in <laughs> winter, like the, the, the law, if, if Elia, so like if, if I'm a bastard, that means I wouldn't have a dad or like not one that I know of or ran off, you know, that would make me a bastard. Hmm. So because technically, even if Elia and, or if Liana and Rhaegar didn't marry, he would be a sand. Which is a because Elia is Dornish. Okay, well, I'm um, okay. But in the lie that well, that's what I'm saying because it was a lie. It's so he's he's Ned Ned's illegitimate son, meaning he would be a snow. Yeah, a snow. Even if he's born in Dorne, it wouldn't matter. So it's basically like where your, where your father is from. from. Okay. Yes. That's what, that's what I was asking. I was like, so even though he's well, born in Dorne, mo- yeah. I was like, wherever even, the parent that you can place, if you can find the mother. And that's the only one that you know. Then I assume that's the one. And then if you can, if you know where the father was from, I assume that takes precedence. Because te- technically, Gendry is a bastard. What would his last name have been? Stone. 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 Yeah. So, it's yeah. I I I think that's probably my favorite favorite thing about Game of Thrones is the like. Because I remember I remember watching that to be like, what the fuck, like, dude. Speaking of so cool. Stone, we, I'm I'm just talking while you were waking up. Tell Luke of, an, of a crazy critical role moment. It's probably the best one I've I've seen. But Ford, he is an orphan, and so he was like, technically, my last name's Stone as well. And I was like, that's dope as hell. So yeah, you you can read through it. I'll uh, I'll tell BJ about the critical role moment that was dope as hell. All right, sorry about that tangent, but hey, that's what you we what love you sign we, up for. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Add uh, John Snow to Fortnite, please. I'm shocked it hasn't happened. Long oh. Claw as the pickaxe. Yes, and a little oh, ghost back go. bling. Puppy ghost. <laughs> yeah, it's just puppy ghost in a backpack. Just like... All right. Most anticipated game, to no one's fucking shock, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah. Yeah, that was the most easiest dub the whole night, honestly. Hades 2 would have been okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I, it would have been 100% I expected okay. that one as well. I, I just feel like... Fine, like with how big remake was and now how rebirth is what did what one last oh tears the kingdom one last year yeah right um cool uh i don't give a shit about esports so we're gonna pass all that neither did they uh <laughs> best multiplayer game was Baldur's gate 3 also cool. fucking deserved considering that the whole game can be played i just want to mention because we talked about this right before we were recording but all the people i saw a guy who was live streaming it was like going through and he's like what is Baldur's Gate multiplayer and he's like it's gotta be Call of Duty it's it wasn't even nominated be- like the nominations were Diablo 4 Party Animals Street Fighter and Mario and or he Baldur's was like Gate. yeah he was like what's Baldur's yeah. Gate and he's like it's a multiplayer too <laughs> uh, best sim strategy as we said was Pikmin 4 beating out Fire Emblem and City Skylines <laughs> shoot fuck yeah uh, best sports racing to no one shock, Forza Motorsport. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, best family game to also no one shock, Mario Wonder. Hell yeah. Uh, best fighting game, Street Fighter Six. Yeah, I think it would have. It, it was either between that or Mortal Kombat. And I think yeah, Street I, Fighter was like the better one. Of there this was year. no contest compared to those two. Yeah. It would have been cool to see like God of Rock or one of these like indie ones win, just because that would have been really good, cool. But I yeah, it was it was one of those two. But they wouldn't have let him present, so it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, best RPG was sadly not sixteen, but Baldur's Gate three. No, but it, I deserved. Yeah, that for RPG. Yeah, Final Fantasy sixteen is more of an action game than it is an RPG. Definitely. But yeah, should have been in the action game category, but whatever. But <laughs> the the game that won best action was our well core, deserved. which also fucking hella deserved it. Uh, best action adventure, Tears of the Kingdom, which yeah, hundred percent deserved. Yeah, best adventure for sure. Uh, innovation and accessibility, Forza Motorsport. I guess I didn't. 
I didn't I didn't delve into any of these accessibility options in any of the games I played, so I wouldn't. Because we don't need them. Yeah. Best VR, Resident Evil Village. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Uh, community support, Baldur's Gate Three. Yep. One hundred percent. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mobile game was Honkai Star Rail, which I guess Honkai is better than Genshin. I'll give it that. So but I would rather ever Crisis win. Yeah, I mean, I I agree, but there's way more content right. in Honkai. The first Rob of the Night was debut indie game. Should have gone to Pizza Tower, but Cocoon won it. Yeah. Pizza Tower is great. Uh, that's the best pizza, debut the indie Pizza game. Tower guys just look like bros. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It uh, was two, it was two like, or three, like, nerd dudes, and I loved mm-hmm. it. However, best indie game total was Sea of Stars, and I think that's fucking Yeah, out, fucking it? let's go on Sea of Stars. That's a that's an incredible game. If you like Chrono Trigger, go play Sea of Stars. You will be disappointed. I play the demo like a motherfucker, and I, and I, I want to, like, actually... They're coming out with a physical edition. <laughs> Limited so, run? Or just in general? I think it's just a basic release. Sick. Uh, best ongoing cyberpunk. Let's go. It was to me. It was either that one or honestly that one or Fortnite or Final Fantasy. Yeah, like, I, I was like, and, well, I mean, to be as for to be fair, all, all of them were pretty good at ongoing. So I agree, but uh, I'm glad that it was cyberpunk. Yeah, games for impact. I don't. It was Chia, which I didn't play any of those. Chia, Chia, Chia. Hey, that. Did you ever give, have a give Chia? us a game about Chia pets? See how that works. That sounds like a dog shit game. Did you yeah. ever have a Chia pet? I did, and it never worked. <laughs> uh, best performance. Uh, there was really most of anyone could have gotten it. I probably would have been fine with it, but Neil Newburn getting it was was well deserved. I personally would have wanted Ben Star, but but Neil was good as well. Yeah, I mean Ben has already been. He got golden an award, yeah. for, so I, I'm okay with Asteria getting it. Best audio design was High Fry Rush, also well deserved. Need to play that. <laughs> best score and music, FF16. Let's go. The only the only option. It uh, was a very noticeable change when they started playing the 16 music at the orchestra thing. And you're like, ooh. Uh, best art direction, I think, should have gone to Liza P, but was Alan Wake. Yeah, I Liza P is that immaculately or, designed. That or Hi-Fi Rush, but I think just because those games are made for that. I think Alan Wake's art direction is good, but not, not Liza P or Hi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Uh, best narrative, Alan Wake. If you'd asked me like four days ago, I would have disagreed with this. I think it it was either that or Phantom Liberty. Maybe this is like an Andor situation where we are just like, no, it can't be that good. I mean, I was in the same boat with you. Where I was like, where the fuck is that? Like, I liked Alan Wake 1, and I like Control. Sure, I'll concede to that because I like, as I said, like, I know good movies and good cinema. And so, like, I'll, you know... The, you guys were like play Metal Gear, and I was like Metal Gear was the, the reason. The reason I say so I, I can concede to like it, it could be in that situation. Well, I say I this as someone. Know. I say this as someone who liked Alan Wake One, and I liked Control. I was. I think I, what Wake, I hated more was how late in the game they were. Well, it was the same thing with uh, God of War Ragnarok coming out within a week of the awards being yeah, but announced. You, I, after here, uh, it's been kind of um, enlightening. Is that there's these? It's there's the fa- Sony fan base are kind of insufferable. Like because well, they only, like yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't plays. matter what if it was Spider Man or if it was something else that yeah. Sony an exclusive. That that's what I was like. Oh my gosh, dude! That was another thing. I like, saw. It, no I saw, matter what, it, if it was a Sony exclusive, everyone would have reacted the same way. If well, a, a you know a smaller you know turn based game. One, everyone, well, any, all the Sony people would have been insufferable I, I saw, about it. I saw a TikTok about somebody complaining that, out that Alan Wake won Best Narrative. And like, bro, Spider-Man 2 had Venom and it had Craven, all this. And, and Venom the guy, does not yeah, mean Best Narrative, no, and, and, then, it. and then the, the guy the guy responding is someone who's played Alan Wake. He's like, Alan Wake deals with like... Alan Wake 2 meta, has Venom. Like meta narratives and like multiple, like all this crazy like psychedelic shit that deals with like trauma and all this stuff. And you're going to tell me that, oh, but Venom make Best Narrative. And it's like, yeah, dude, the spider the most, that's the most carnal like enemy. Like, in oh Spider-Man. no, like Yuri Lowenthal got to be a, an asshole as Peter Parker, and that makes a really good narrative. Like, I I don't understand the like love for Spider Man Two. I do not get it, except that these guys probably only played Spider Man Two as their only story game this year, and they're like, well, clearly this is the best. Also, like the image that I have of Peter Parker, Peter Parker being an asshole is like taking a penny but not leaving a penny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ever. Uh, best game direction. Also got Alan Wake 2. I don't know how I feel about that one. It's a good game, but I... That one might be recency bias. Probably. Well, and I get... I wonder... 
outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction design. I mean, honestly, either, I yeah, I guess, but I, I would have put Baldur's Gate. Innovation. Well, innovation in game direction and design, and Baldur's Gate's whole design is like every choice you make is it matters. All this crazy shit that you can do that will affect Act Three even. Well, I, I'll, I, I think stuff. it's also been like innovative towards. I mean, I guess this is not. I mean, I, I like what I, the award is really, but the fact that people who are pl- are playing turn based game mm-hmm. who have never even thought about that or even touched Dungeon Dragons is it's it, the impact it's made is I think I think crazy. that I think that hits more for like just game of the year in general. I don't know because like the the game direction is like how a game is presented to you versus like because I mean I guess like I haven't beaten Alloway too, so I can't tell you how it ends, but like. From where I'm at, it's like I just got done with the like actual Alan part of where he's like the protagonist going through some trippy fucking weird shit. And the direction they use to detail this is really good. But I still I think as a as a package, Baldur's Gate 3 would should have won that. Because I think like the like one, you have like how the story progresses and how it's built around your choices, both in dialogue and in just what you do and how it seamlessly works like there's there's i there hasn't been a moment that i've seen that like oh that's weird it's always just been like oh shit yeah that thing that obscure thing i did in act one is reflected here in act two mm-hmm. like i don't know i, th- I think it should have been baldur's gate as well uh and then yeah game of the year baldur's gate oh yeah deserved i i honestly i don't again this is you guys did you see the clip i put so on our on our instagram of the devs reacting uh, it was a while ago. It was the day after, but it's a clip of of Baldur's Gate, you know, get, getting the announcement, and then all the devs watching the Game Awards. Like the second it happened, they popped champagne and like shook it all over the place. It was hell great. yeah, it was I great love that for them. Yeah, me too. And then there's like like one guy who's like, and everyone else is hugging each other, and he's like, <laughs> I'm, oh yeah, okay. You see this guy who freaked out about. Spider-Man not winning. No. His sounds like the fucking Game Awards killed his dog and like ran over his grandma. No, like, like he is upset and he's sitting here going like, "Bro, be serious. We had Venom, Sp- Miles, Spider. Like, wh- who played Baldur's Gate? Like, shit like that. That's my favorite one. If they go, who played it? I'm like, well, 22 million people according to sales numbers. <laughs> like, it sold outrageous numbers." Like, I don't think you can, like, this This to me shows that there are people who just do not play games outside of their sphere, which is like... Well, that's that's part yeah. of what I was saying, is I've, I've realized that there's just, like, Sony cucks. Well, and, and I, yeah. the thing is, like... As much as I, you know, I, I loved God of War and Last of Us one, Part 1 and Part 2, you know, deserving, but it, it's, it's when I see a game like this and everyone loses their mind, I'm like, what the heck is, like... I, I, I think it's it's literally just people being like, yo, they don't play games like that, and then Spider-Man is a well-known name. Yeah. They probably only play, like, Fortnite and Apex or COD, and then th- this this and a Rockstar game are, like, the only story stuff they're going to play. So, that's like, true. that's about it. And it sucks, because, like... I got one TikTok where this dude was watching like he's like let me let me let me look at a Baldur's Gate trailer and he looked at it and he got to the part of the trailer where it showed all of the 10 out of 10 reviews and do pause it and go shit oh yeah they yeah. all got there, that like he was like, like what it's like a, a grid of I think like every if, like 10 oh, by 10 yeah and it's like 5 out of 5 10 out of 10 yeah <laughs> and he's like he paused it and he's like shit how, and he's like how come I never heard of this game like it that's a lot of good reviews and he's like then he tried it out and he's like I'm I'm kind of having fun. I can fuck with it, and I'm like, there you go. He, he that's that's what yeah. th- that's what I want to see. Not hey, yo, like, th- did you see the people saying it look like? Oh, I don't want to play that shit. It looks like a mobile game. I'm like, what mobile games are you playing? Dude, th- yeah, Holy I was gonna say my fuck. my computer is like, ah! my Steam Deck can't handle the fucking game. What do you, what mobile game are you fucking playing? Not Holy man. shit! Those particle effects go crazy. Every time I Eldritch Blast, my Steam Deck looks like it's gonna fucking explode. <laughs> The vent at the top shoots out and they'll just blast. Yeah. <laughs> every every time you just you in its actual smoke just go. Poof. It's like oh fuck. I yeah. I uh. Were there any other like announcements that stuck out to you, or was it all just kind of seemed like kind of blended together? The Sega trailer. 
I, oh, I saw yes. that was fucking Golden huge. Axe and Crazy Taxi, Crazy Taxi. Jet Set Radio. Uh, what, there was a couple others they were announced. But basically, Sega finally going, all right, so we don't just have three IPs of Persona, Sonic, and Yakuza. Yeah, they were like, we're going to throw all of our old shit at the wall again. And I fucking love that. Keep that shit going. Give well, I didn't new- recognize Jet Set Radio, but the second Crazy Taxi and Gold... I didn't even know that was Golden Axe, but I was like... That's crazy taxi. I can tell because it's the same dwarf. I was like, "Oh shit, I'm I'm down for that." Like, it, it seems that Sega is is actually like I like the direction Sega is going in for sure. Sonic is in a good spot. Yakuza <laughs> keeps like hitting. Persona is con- consistent. They hired Danny Trejo, shape. and they they seem to have a a good focus on the Dreamcast era. Mm. So maybe this is when they'll finally reveal Shenmue Four. Because they they there have been leaks about it for years now. Is it Shinmu like very similar to Yakuza? Shinmu the the combat inspired Yakuza a lot, and Nagoshi actually worked on it. I think I think he worked before on he two. did. Yeah, and so then I know he worked on two, and then uh, and then he went to Super Monkey Ball. And then yeah, then he then he did Super Monkey. He Ball. created Super Monkey Ball, and he went Super Monkey Ball Yakuza. Yeah. Why is there a Super Monkey Ball mini game? Well, Kiryu is in the Super Monkey Ball remake. <laughs> what? How? He's a skin. He's yeah. just in the little ball, and you get to run around as Kiryu. It's Chibi Kiryu. And yeah. What? Yeah. And, and instead of bananas, they put in little stamina and bottles. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm, I'm looking this cool. up right now. It's actually kind of it. cool. No, I'm I'm super hyped for that. Sega Sega deserves, like... Their, re- their redemption arc has been pretty similar to how Capcom's has been. Yeah. Where oh after, gosh, after is. shitting... Yeah. And he's I mean, I believe you, but, you know... It's, it's, Seeing is way different yeah. when you're seeing like, oh shit. Believing. But like seeing how Capcom kind of with evolved. his big head. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that isn't that the one that's on the karaoke box? Like in uh, some of the games? I think so. Cause it's it's the it's the remake that's like the first People three. made a, a Majima uh texture pack. Nice. With either him in the uh Gourmet dress or the The Grand or the okay. The grand um, one or his snakeskin jacket. It's it's been really fun seeing a lot of Japanese developers come back from almost shitting the bed during the like HD generation because none of them were ready for like PS3 and 360 era. Because like Square was fucking up bad with like Final Fantasy 13. That was also around the time where all the Japanese studios were like, we need to appeal to America only. Yeah, and then it, I, because Square is kind of on. I think I think the big one for Square was when Final Fantasy fourteen didn't suck. Once they went with the Realm Reborn, that was kind of the, the the start of the uptick for them. Resident Evil Seven was the start for Capcom, and it's, I want to say probably Persona Five was the start of the uptick for Sega because that was their first major hit. Then Yakuza started hitting with Yakuza Zero. Then we get Frontiers with Sonic. And yep. it's just been kind of consistent uphill for them too. I'm um, I'm cool with seeing all these Japanese developers kind of find their stride again. Cause that's that's what I want. I want some good I want some good good shit from these guys. And I'll happily buy a crazy taxi if it's fun. Yeah, I I have the uh, the 360 uptick version on my Steam Deck, so I'll I'll definitely play the new one when it comes out. But Jet Set was huge because that is probably the most like cult fandom that's ever existed. It's it's ironic that it's right after Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah it, if, is, if they uh, had announced it a year earlier, it would have been the biggest news of all time. But apparently, Bomb Rush is actually pretty fucking good. Though. It looks I've pretty. Seen cool. a lot of I need stuff to play about it. It gave it gives me like a combination of um, Roller Dome. Well, I mean, mostly because it's roller skates, and then a, a little bit of the aesthetic of uh, Neon White. Mm. Yeah. I, I want to play it just because it looks fun, but what do you think of uh, Hellblade 2 actually getting some gameplay? It looks really good. Like, every time I see Hellblade, I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. And we know it's next year for sure now, at least. There were a lot of <clears throat> confirmed dates on video games, which is cool to see. Um, yeah. Not like COVID era, like, oh, like, this year. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, it's just like, hey, we're getting it. You know, yeah. Yeah, actual dates were really cool to see was that was that dead by daylight game oh uh the the case of some some or other something stone yeah that looked interesting yeah and it's by supermassive so the until dawn people yeah so that, that's yeah and it's a single player game so that'll be very because when we as like the trailer was going on i was asking bj what he thought it was and he's like it's probably just gonna be like another you know 
Like update. We thought it, we started out thinking it was going to be like DVD two, but then I was like, well, they wouldn't abandon all the crossovers they've had. Yeah. And then it turned out to be like a single player spinoff experience, which I think is really cool for a game like that, where you have a lot of different like, characters, you know, horror yeah. characters that don't have lore to attach to them. You, you can just make just a make whole. It now. Yeah, which is great. Other than that, though, yeah, uh, Exodus, the Matthew McConaughey space game, seems interesting. Of like, oh yeah, so you travel light years and you, you know, time dilations and all this other crap. At first, when he was talking, I'm like, there's no way they're making an interstellar game. Well, that's that's the yeah. same conversation that we had. I was like, there is no fucking way they're gonna make a game it's on just, interstellar. And then it's for like having a movie. <laughs> if there's no way, like the movie is so linear. There's like, we need to do this. And this is what we do. There's not like a side story. There's not. It's just. It's a linear movie, and that deals with time. But it also reminded me because I remember I showed you the um, Citizen Con mm-hmm. single player game with all a bunch of famous like uh, mocap actors mm-hmm. and voice actors. Like, so it just reminded me of that a little bit. Not to say like I'm not excited for this next game. It looks dope. I it, it it gave me Mass Effect vibes at least in terms of the combat where I'm like all right so you get some powers and it's a third person like shooter I was like all right cool and it's in space and the way they keep talking about it like oh yeah your decisions I'm like all right so maybe they're gonna try to fill that void that Mass Effect hasn't filled since the shitty release of Andromeda so hopefully they do good uh yeah I mean Game Awards need to do better a hundred percent yeah I. Uh, any other new stuff? I know we talked about GTA 6 last week, I think. Or... Yeah. What else has been going on? Um, they, they, I uh, they... recently bought Civ 6 and been playing it. And it is... Cr- I mean, I've talked about how much time... Mm. I, it is crazy how fast four hours goes by when I'm playing that game. I When I first bought it, I was like, alright. It was like 7 o'clock. And then it was 11. And uh, instantly, and I just... It just... Ugh. That that's what it was like playing Elden Ring for the first time. There was there was one day where I woke up like it was the second or third day of me having the game, but I started playing like I woke up early for this. I woke up early to play Elden Ring on a day off at like eight a.m. and then I started playing and then I looked outside and it was already dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that's a good gaming day though. There's you're, also you're so dialed. I in. bought like it was a twenty four dollar pack that was originally two hundred dollars because of all the DLC. Damn and. Um, I was like, dope, like, deals, like, I've never bought DLC for a Civ game before. It's just the disc I got, and that's what I played. Mm -hmm. And is it, like, substantial shit? No. (laughs) No, not at all. They're like, it's (laughs) like they'll add an army. This one one is like, this, this update, the biggest update that I'm playing right now, that's, is like, every, like, ten turns, a natural disaster happens. And there's also, like, Oh, you can Just build like in real life. You can build if you build on these tiles. Like, also <coughs> beware when you get to like the tech, the technology era. Like, tides will rise and you'll lose these tiles. And I'm like, like, what the fuck? I don't care. <laughs> these could have been mods. And then there were like also like yeah. oh like but these these tiles will flood occasionally. But after the flood, like it'll make mineral rich soil. Be careful to build next to a volcano. But after, you'll have mineral-rich soil. I'm like, what? Make it make the game like, needlessly more complicated than it is. I, I sent that uh, vine to Luke after he was like, Alan Wake deserves the awards it won. Look at crazy. Did you, uh... Speaking of, like, DLC, like, you said, like, oh, yeah, $200 for, like, all of Civ Six, And I'm like, damn... Have y'all seen how, like, some complete editions forget? Like, have you seen the Far Cry 6 complete edition is $120? Fucking why? And I'm like, isn't, aren't the complete editions supposed to be a discounted down, like, it's $60 for everything type shit? Now well, it's, it's like, probably, like, $40 for the most recent game. And then, like, $10 for the remaining games? But even then, that would be, like, what? Well, it's like, it's 90 like... 90 bucks? Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> Far Cry 6, and I think it's, like three expansions and even then they're not they're not like wor- like that that package is not worth 120 dollars when i was like yeah 24 dollars for what you say i was like that's fine with me i was i mean i think the base game was like nine dollars so i was like I'm yeah fine well yeah spoiling. like what you were saying is like yeah that, that's that's worth it like 
I'm, I'm, I guarantee you if there's, like, a sale. Oh, there was, like, 17 yeah. items yeah. In, in that package. But, like, I noticed that with, like, other things. Like, uh, there's a complete edition for Dead or Alive 6. Oh, the Dead or Alive yeah. DLC is... The Dead or Alive DLC is, a, is fucked. It's like, here's titties Here, with green pasties. Here's titties with blue pasties. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. Or it's like, here's three different wedding dress variations for each of the girl characters. And you're like... Oh, this is kind of sad. I mean, we say that, but then if Final Fantasy VII Rebirth does it, we'll be like, all right, $99, that's <laughs> nothing. I mean, I'm already getting the Deluxe Edition for Rebirth anyway, so but I, yeah. just, I need that steelbook. The, uh, speaking of the game awards and things that have just won, I think Armored Core is probably going to go on sale for Christmas. Do you think they're going to do DLC for that game? Well, I guess probably not with them working so hard on the Elden Ring. Game. I mean, I hope so. If, if they were to do DLC, I told we we talked about this a lot when it launched. I was like, they should just do like a pack of Gundam parts for like thirty dollars. Everybody would eat that up. Like if they would just like wouldn't that they they could isn't there's already yeah, mods. Well, there's there's already, no no no, there's no there's not, not just mods but isn't Armor Core made by Namco Bandai Namco Bandai, they yeah, have the they license absolutely could so they they wouldn't have to pay anything for that it would just be pure money the, for the them. next one they need to do is just they could send they could sell a hundred dollar game that was like the Gundam series collection where you got to play through all the game or like just do like UC honestly they the could, UC the Gundam UC game they where could you just, just play do, through yeah. the UC timeline I'd pay a hundred dollars for that and each time you get to like just play through as the characters and have space they battles I want them do to an armored core cross Gundam game where it's like it's not canon to either but here's we're gonna make a fucking sick ass story where you're this like orphan they don't even have to, to create new fucking... canon there's so much what I'm saying is like any a lot of those like crossover like things yeah. in Japan are like just be like oh Char's trying to take over Rubicon yeah like it'd be that yeah and you could just <laughs> be <make> fire <laughs> <laughs> gas a hundred percent really gonna be the fires of Rubicon now <laughs> dude it yeah that would be it's so easy for them yeah because they they also spit out models like every yeah, time a they, new game comes out they I I found this out because of the huge leak that happened at Bandai for the models. But they have digital versions of all the Gundam models. Yeah, and people they and people people downloaded them. And download them the and STLs. can just print them. Yeah, which is crazy. But like they have those resources, just drop them in an armor core. Come on. Yeah, it's very get easy. an armor core uh, model kit going. Uh, that would be dope, especially since like there's Bothy, like Bothy is our yeah, model just do kit. the bosses <laughs> yeah. and you're golden. It's just crazy how like. There's nothing happening in the world of... I think there's, like, one ongoing game called, like, Tactical something or, like, Operation... I don't know. There's, like, one Gundam game that's actually, like, has continued support now that um, the builders, Evolution the, is... Whatever is, the mobile one is, too. And the... Well, the one I played, which was Gundam, which they literally made model kits of... The with, Gundam Builders stuff? Yes. Yeah. Is, is done. Oh, it's, it's done at least, at least okay. not on iPhone. Okay, because I had it downloaded for a while. And I, I did too. Yeah. And they, were, they would have like gig updates to that game because they would have so many different... I mean, you could like... I have one. Add, that, you could change your head, the arms, the chest, the legs. I have, I have a, a, a Breakers yeah, kit. Yeah, it's called Breakers. I, I, I need to build. I but yeah, it's, it's like it's they've the abandoned that. They really need to... Like that game that you were talking about where you just go through the UC timeline. Just make like Ninja Storm Generations or something. Where you play through different key story moments, but use the gameplay from Evolution. I need, it's already I, fully built. I need. I want to play the new Naruto game. It looks dope. Oh, that's another thing. Sparking Zero, which is Budokai Four. Yeah, Budokai Four officially gets or, sorry, announced. Sorry, Budokai Zero, because because in Japan they're called Sparking. Yeah. So whatever, but yeah, a new Budokai game, which showing Broly like that. Got me way was way more hype than it should have. It looks great, but I I'm a little bit worried because the appeal to Tenkaichi 3 was like there's 8 billion characters in this game I don't think they're gonna even nearly approach that I think well, it's gonna be like here's 8 versions of Goku they're like probably, the well, Fighter Z kind well, of like, thing they're, they're probably gonna do the thing where it's like here cause the, the last rumor I saw was that there's gonna be GT characters in it okay so, so that that's that's good I, I would not be shocked if it's like here's Broly and then here's the original version of Broly as two separate characters on the select screen you know Xenoverse 2 is like still completely supported with DLC to this Which day. Which is wild. Yeah, like... Well, to be fair, Fighter Z is still supported, so, like... But w when was the last time they had a character come out? 
It was another version of Goku. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, the the best Have one they that they did. Have they played Super Saiyan Four in Fighter Z yet? Yes, they did. Okay, uh, so. you can play as <laughs> SS Four Gogeta. Oh fuck! They need to canonize that. Like, a- actually, make, fucking lootly. it's probably gonna be the final. Like, Give it to Gohan. He's going the beast route. Yeah, like he's not going Super Saiyan God. Just make him a fucking. Have him go Super Saiyan Four. That would be so fire. That actually would be pretty sick. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know what Broly's doing, though, because his whole thing is just completely different. He's going Super Saiyan, but his is just so far above. Yeah. That I want I want to know what It's his... the legendary variant. Like, yeah, he, so he genetically is a Super Saiyan. But, um, the... What was I going to say? I can't remember. Fuck I'm, it. I mentioned Sparking Zero. Yeah. And then I wanted to play the new Ninja Storm game. Or record? I don't remember. Have Where you the... seen anything about that new Jujutsu Kaisen game? The the mobile one or the PS4 one? The PS4 one. Uh, it's a 2v2, I think, or a 3v3, I forget. Interesting. It's, but it's a fighter, like every anime game. Dude, there was that trailer for the new mech game. For that new mech game, which apparently is a battle royale. That's which is, interesting. Speaking of battle royale... Have I'm not played, happy about that, but have whatever. Have any of y'all played the finals yet? What no. What's that? It's another like free battle royale, but apparently like the beta drops... A while back, people were saying it was really fun, and then it dropped, and it was like on consoles, yeah. It, and it apparently has like concurrent two hundred thousand each console, like on the day one. Like people were like, "Oh, this is doing numbers for a no name new battle royale." Like it, it was doing, it's doing better than all the other ones that dropped, like Hyperscape and whatever Ubisoft dropped. Everspace, not Everspace. Ubisoft did like three of them of different like yeah. weird genres Everspace that are all really dead now. Game. Well, Everspace was the, the ship one. That's yeah, but that had. was a pretty game. I haven't played it. Apparently there's a second one. It's on Game Pass. I've, I played uh, the second one, yeah on, yeah, on my PC, and it was really pretty. Yeah, I, I do you think I'd enjoy it like, for like a like a quick gaming sesh? Like, probably not dive hours into it. Play but, two like, hours, sure. Yeah, I'm, I want to try it. I mean, it's, I'm not going to lose anything. It's on Game Pass. Yeah. Except, you know, downloading it. <laughs> Speaking of that, fucking... I had to re-download Baldur's Gate 3 because the newest update would not download. And so I had to delete it from my PS5 and re-download it. It's like, you're downloading 117 gigs. It'll be done in 40-some hours. It's like, Oh my gosh, dude. And so it took two days, and I'm just like, I keep coming back. Our Wi-Fi at home is shit. My mom and dad are like, what? Something's wrong with the Wi-Fi. And I'm over here going, damn, that's crazy. I wonder what that is. (laughs) And I'm just like, just download, please. And it finally is downloaded. I'm like, thank God. And I, I booted up, and already I, I was like, oh, let me see all the new shit they did. Dude, custom games? Crazy. I, the shit I can't you can wait customize to do, is like, fucking Nexus insane. mods, because apparently some of the best Nexus mods are just aesthetic. Like, you can just care. Like, they added, like... <laughs> did you see the one that Nexus had? Like, 102 hit? more haircuts and, like, did you a see bunch the, of other Did you see the stuff. Nexus mod that, uh... Had to be taken down because it was for racist shit where they were like, we made every black person in the game white. Oh no. Yeah, there was a there was a <laughs> mod and then Nexus mod took it down and then the mod creator was like, what the fuck, bro? What? Well, we can't just make aesthetic changes to characters now? That's fucking bullshit. And it's like, it is. You it, took it, every It's not black bullshit game. when you create a white ethno state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, like, it's literally like every single person who would have been black turned white. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then they were like, they, there was other things, and they were like, we made all the all the Dyke characters look more feminine. And I'm just like, okay, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm on board now. No, I'm <laughs> but it's like it's basically just like let's make this game not as a uh, not as a uh, diverse as it, it is. Let people make whatever mods they want. <laughs> I know, like the mod you can still download. You just can't download it through Nexus, which I'm like at that point, sure. If it's your if it's I your mod, I don't understand mods, that though. So, well, if it's, because if, Skyrim Nexus is the same website, Nexus mods for Skyrims, you can get into some shady shit. Anything that's boring. Sex with the orphan children you adopt. Like, I'm, like 100%. Is that on Nexus? I'm, it's got it. Everything for Skyrim's on Nexus, Well, no, dude. but I, I know Nexus is typically pretty, like, hey, if it's, like, illegal. All the crazy borderline. mods I got were on Nexus. Oh, no, you can get sex mods driver. and crazy shit. As, as long as it's not, like, full-on, like, we could get our website taken down for this shit, they typically are like, fuck it. As long as it, it won't get them in hot water, they don't care. So, like, yeah, I, I doubt you can fuck the orphan children in Skyrim through Nexus mods. Zero out of ten. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. <laughs> not my cup of tea. 
<laughs> just, just oh, do you? Do you there like- was a part when we were watching Arya and Gendry start to get down with each other, and she like fully undresses. I was like, "Whoa, hold on, this can't be okay." And you forget that like, oh, and yeah, I, I immediately had to pause. I was like, "Okay, she's twenty two and she filmed it." Huh. Yeah, no, that's it's crazy when you actually think about it. Like, oh yeah, I watch these characters grow up. Yeah, I it, mean, it's a weird to like, me. It's weird. Like, I'm I'm it, honestly glad she, Sansa okay, never if we got just like. Say, like you know, canonically to make it legal that she was 18 when she banged Gendry. It has not been the the age we see her when oh, yeah. when Arya's when age Ned is leaves, not okay. When Ned leaves Winterfell is not 13 because it's not been five years. It's yeah. been like no, she what, like two, she three is, at most. Well, I actually don't know how, what the actual like timeline is. Yeah, I'd have to look that up. But I, I know I yeah, it's it's that weird thing where you're like, oh right. Because, like, technically, Sansa would have been... She would have been way younger. Because I think, technically, in the book, Sansa's 11 when she leaves Winterfell. But in the show, they age her up to, like, 13. Well, that mean Arya would be, like, 8. Yes. Which, make, dude, there's moments in the books where I'm very it's uncomfortable. It's not 10 years, I'll tell you that much. No, dude, there's moments in the books that I'm very uncomfortable that Arya seduces a dude. And I'm like, you are, you are like, 9. What are you doing? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah, but then sure. she kills the dude, and I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the scene. It's yeah. in uh, Bravos. Yeah, yeah. Yep. In 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 the books, they George is not like he sure goes like, yeah, Arya's nine, and I'm like, don't tell me that. I don't need like fuck. And While then, but she's then she doing kills this, the guy. let me remind you that she is nine years old. It's like, yeah, if you're feeling anything the pizza down there, is coming. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's if, gonna be awesome. If you're feeling anything down there, I just want to remind you, there's a nine year old girl doing this, and you're like, ooh. The only thing I feel is how creepy you are, George R. 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 Martin. Yeah, this man, this man likes writing about incest. He makes a point to talk about people with ages right before a sexual encounter. It's a little. My man really likes his incest. He, he, yeah, he might have had some like real attractive like step siblings or something yeah i like on on one hand it's like i understand because like the time period he's like basing it off of is like i right, this was like more normal back then but at the same time i don't i don't i don't like it i'm not a fan not, not I, don't, I don't need like i like the show's run where they're like let's age them all up yeah or in the case of the the lannisters age them down because they were like they're all supposed to be like 40 or like 40 or more older and then they're like let's age them down to like 30 30s and 40s instead of like Tyrion's supposed to be like well he's the youngest so I think he's like 37 canonically then Cersei's like 45 and Jamie and Jamie's 45 and then they age them down for the show so they can be a little younger and hotter I guess I do like Jamie's look now oh yeah he's yeah. like he instead of instead of the the Prince Charming from Shrek 2 he's now like punished Jamie. he's got the beard back also when Jamie like comes to Winterfell and he's like sitting in front of Jon Snow um Arya and uh, Daenerys and all those everyone all the Starks brands like the things we do for love and I was like I was oh! like, I, out loud was like oh shit oh oh he did it I, I I was also really pissed off at Daenerys in that scene because Jamie's just standing there in front of all of them and she's like your sister promised to send an army and you're the only one that's here and Jamie's like, I fucking betrayed my family to come and help you. I'm the only one here. I'm the only one with the courage to fight death. And you're going to treat me like this? That Congra- pissed me off. Congrats. And then she was like, your people killed my family. And I, and then you were like, Sam should be speaking up right now. I mean, shit. Sansa should be speaking up right now. Like any of them were like, Arya could be like, yeah, uh, your fucking, your kid killed my dad. But like they were like, no. But Sam should have been like, "Shut up, Daenerys! You killed my yeah. dad and brother." Yeah, no, dude. I fucking yeah. I I cannot wait to see how George deals with Daenerys in the books because I, I I do think I do think she's gonna go mad in the books. I think there's enough. I think she's gonna follow in the, the footsteps of her father for sure. Her father was was it Eris, the Mad King, right? Pretty yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. I think Wasn't so. Was her granddad? Yeah, well, because Rhaegar is her brother. Yeah, so yeah, it'd be Aerys. So yeah, I think uh, I think it's gonna be the same thing where she's gonna she's gonna. I I honestly think the only reason John doesn't go mad is because of the Stark shit. And he was raised because he's raised by. I think it's based on how they were raised. It's like look at every if you go look at every Targaryen being raised, they're kings, they're rulers, but then everybody's out to kill them. Everybody's like it, it, they never have a moment of. I just want to live like a normal life. They never get that, and it. I think John's always, first thing is like, I want to go serve 
for the betterment well, yeah, of the like, world. He he gets <laughs> raised by the most honorable dude in the in the world, and that's who he aspires to be like. And it's like it affects him, mm. and it makes him be like the best guy. There were moments where like when he like bent the knee, I was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "But he's he's but he's but he's the better better than all of us." Like I get it. Like it's so true to character. But and I don't I, like it. I also like every time that I didn't previously because he wasn't talking about it. But every time they're like, you weren't supposed to be in the knee. You were supposed to be king of the north. And John's like, I don't want to be the fucking king. I just want to help people. God damn it. <laughs> it, it makes you go like, damn, he'd be a great king. A hundred percent. Which is the, like the Occam's razor of <laughs> yeah. John Snow. He's like, I don't want to fucking be king. Everybody's like, this guy should be the king. And he's like, no, 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 no. We just got to beat these zombies. I, He's I, like he like tries to abandon it and he like works in a small town and they're like you should be the mayor. <laughs> He's like fuck no. <laughs> I have to leave. <laughs> no, I have to leave. He he gets like a job as a lowly like just like yeah. regular dude. And like then, serving so, so, at some, a, at some a, guy. Like, some guy's like dude, you should be the CEO. And he's like fuck. God dang it! He's I'm like, gonna promote you to manager. No. <laughs> <laughs> we really think you do a great job as ma- in management. And he's like god dang it. <laughs> Just uh, leaves, yeah. I can't wait for you to finish uh, Game of Thrones because I, I want I want a full like, like because obviously like you I I feel I always feel like I'm more critical of the show just because I feel like I hate I like I was like vitriolic angry when it ended when I probably should just been like it's a fucking TV show who cares but like well if you just separate like up until now and until well, the last three well episodes. and I th- I think a, a worse part too is when I started reading the books and going into fan theories and seeing like I like deep dive like video essays that like affected my opinion you on the show it. too yeah um I mean from where I'm sitting the climax has happened and the climax was satisfying and everything else is just falling action it's true it it's it sucks because like I I think that like I I've told you guys this that I feel like if they would have pushed the seasons more where you had 10 seasons you have an entire an entire like all of season eight is the night king we have to kill the night king we have to defeat the long night that's one whole ass season the next season is okay well now it's daenerys wants the iron throne cersei is not cool with that so i will say it feels accurate though about how rushed the night king stuff is like like the yeah, army's not stopping because they they don't have to sleep, they don't have to eat, they're yeah. just fucking marching on. Yeah, like though. when Tormund gets back from uh, East East Watch or East yeah East Watch by the Sea, he's like, they're gonna be here before sunrise. Before sun, yeah, yeah, and that feels accurate. That feels like we do not have time to make ten more, ep- you know, like a well, season I mean, out of this. Like when, we have when, to deal with it now. When I say a season, it's like imagine like the 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 how fucked it would be if it's like. Some of y'all have to escape, and it's like, what does that mean? We'll we'll have to stay back, try to keep the army here while you go, and it's like you literally like the the entire season is now, the main heroes are on the run, and have to figure out. But how that would whatever. feel true to at least to the characters of the Starks, at least. What like, I'm saying is like I I I'm I I feel I need to I need to find the video that I saw, but someone was like, I rewrote season seven, eight, and nine of Game of Thrones, or seven and eight of Game of Thrones, and it was like. I would argue. Like I understand yeah. and appreciate like how shows are able to add more depth to stuff by making them stuff drawn out and putting it multi episode. But it feels so accurate to be like rush. Like yeah. we just got people here. The next day the the army's here. That feels accurate. Even though it would have been dope to have more and more well, depth it, and it, stuff. It, it, it's but, it's what, what I what I mean is plan it out better in that it's and, it's and not, to, to we, think about like people running away and leaving, that would just make me like hate characters. Well, in 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 what I mean by that is more so the idea of like, and it's not it's this isn't like me saying well this is what it seems like it's it's abundantly clear they wrote season six, and they, that's it. Then they wrote season seven, then they wrote season eight. They didn't like go okay well we don't have anything else to go off of let's plan out the final seasons this is where our last episode is going to be we have to get to here like let's plan it out they're just like all right cool season six we're going to deal with ramsey now and we'll worry about night king shit later and we're that like they wrote a season and a season and a season instead of going well let's build it and like let's go ahead and write our plot let's write our our conclusion and instead they were just like they did it season for by season. the directors for episodes <laughs> Is it everyone's different, or they just like switch? For the time? most part, I mean, it, it they'll hire like a director of an episode. Like they have their team of writers, 
obviously a director, like the director of the the, the battle uh battle of the battle bastards. bastards. Uh, I kind of wish he did the uh, battle for Winterfell. Honestly, he should be the guy doing every long ass battle. That shit was amazing. Oh yeah. Um, but like. It, it, the way they do it is they have obviously the the showrunners dictate everything, but then you have your your writers, and then you from that once you get the writing and the script done, then it goes to a director and the rest of the team to then make the sh- the make it happen. Um, I just wish they would have planned it out more. That's I think what I'm saying is like I because I feel like you because like with what we have now, yeah, I don't see how they could have made the Night King a whole season. But if you would have planned it out ahead of time, or like, hey, we want to have 10 seasons, and then we're going to do it this way, where here's season six is, is getting Winterfell back, doing this. All of season seven is a preparation season of this, but we're going to deal with the South here, do this. And then it's like, all of season eight is the Night King is coming. They just, like, like let, let make season seven end of they just breached the wall. And it's literally all of season eight is we have to fucking deal with that. And, and you can have, like, a battle go on for multiple episodes, where it's like, we're, we're like... This whole episode is dedicated to this battle happening here. This one's happening here. This happening here. I, like I'm not a showrunner. I don't know that shit. Yeah. But you know what I mean. And then have it where like season eight ends, the Night King's dead, and you have like maybe an episode detailing the aftermath leading into the next season. It's like all right. Well now, Cersei sit on the Iron Throne. Daenerys wants that throne. There's your plot for the next season of that's what's gonna happen. So who does who does Cersei still have on her side? It is Who's crazy going for Daenerys, in that you know? episode. How it's pretty much like they've defeated like the majority of the the army, and then the Night King was like, "All right." And the people they were fighting at the end were just the newly raised people, but like Jorah and Daenerys were just in, and John were like in the fields, yeah. The, and there were no White Walkers there. John kind of gets his own hallway scene, and then he like goes out into the <laughs> courtyard, and the fucking dragons there. That was really fire. It, it's one of those, and again, that's and it's. I'm gonna be honest. Part of it is just me wanting to see John kill the Night King. I think it's cool. I think Arya killing him is cool. I just personally was like, I feel like. Never I mean, clearly, I would have preferred my yeah. boy John doing but, it. But yeah, I. But it, I think it's also cool that the I now, Arya he, killing him is the seed that John planted. Like he gave her a needle. He he like encouraged her in this path i think for me the reason is because like that's that has been like john's villain i guess i'll i can talk to matt about it i can't really talk to you but like Arya has a villain and i feel like her her art could have ended really well i mean the in a the, certain bit the, the only person left on her list at this point it's is cersei. cersei so that's kind of the vibe i get where it's like that to me would have been the really the coolest bit of like that should have been Arya's Arya and Sansa's arc of like the sisters going this is the bitch who's ruined our lives the most like we have to get her and John's like there to help but he's done his well, thing I actually think you technically it was Joffrey Joffrey well I mean Cersei inherently like does it doesn't help like it's Joffrey's already dead yeah not true. by in, it, but it's it's the thing of like Cersei's but not see, about it's to... the individual actions of Joffrey that kind of fuck everything over to begin with it will in, in in the same way you can kind of like say that well John you know giving needle to Arya helps that like all this stuff it's like well yeah if Cersei was a better mother and a better person maybe Joffrey would have been a complete piece of shit if maybe he you know he was disciplined a little bit or I don't know or may or maybe maybe if Jamie was actually like oh let me try to be a dad to these kids maybe I would have been a better yeah you know any any Isn't of those it things also true that like the Dornish don't even show up now in these next three oh episodes? yeah hundred percent they're go- they're done. That's ridiculous. Even though, even though in the books they're really important now, because the whole Aegon Targaryen plotline of he's alive, he's trying to make, you know, because he has a direct line to Dorne being Elia Martell's son. He's like, I'm gonna get a Dorne, like Dorne will be with me, and and like I think he's gonna try to get a marriage with Ariana Martell, which she is not in the show. She was just cut completely, which is a shake. She's Who's actually that the the wife of the leader. Uh, she, she, yeah, no, the, the daughter, crippled, daughter of of the Dorn. crippled guy. Yeah, daughter. Um, but so he's gonna make a, a marriage. Li- I think I think he's trying to get a marriage alliance with her. But realistically, Aegon is doing it all, at least from what we can tell, just to just to help Daenerys. So I think someone else is planting seeds to try to get Daenerys and the Iron Throne through him. Mm-hmm. But that's another thing where it's like Dorne is, has more because Ariana Martell is one of the POV characters in the next book. So like Dorne will have a major point in that. 
Yeah, yeah, and the show, Dorne's done. They were done after the whole Sand Viper thing, and which... I'm gonna be honest, the Dorne part was kind of mid. It should have been better because of yeah. how badass they are. Yeah, yeah, like, after you tease us a bit with Oberyn being as cool as he is, and then you go to Dorne and you're like, this is kind of... Eh... I'm not. I mean, like, it I was. was I, I did like the the bit where Jamie and Bron go to save Jamie's daughter. I thought that was cool. Oh but... yeah, no that that. And then and then yeah, because what I was gonna say is is like how crazy it was when when uh, the girl kissed uh, Jamie's daughter and was like, "All right, goodbye," and then she dies on the ship. Oh, it's crazy. It I I like it, the Dorn part could have been so much better. I feel, but I, I also, I don't know how to write it better. Like, I feel, I just feel like, I don't know. Also, like, they never dive back into the second sons that are, like, holding down the, uh, what's the city they were in that she was in with the pyramids for, like, the longest time? Um, Marine. No. Marine. Marine, yeah. Never talk about that again. Like, Yeah. So. That's why I'm very interested in where the books are going to go because Daenerys hasn't left yet. Do you think she's going to die before finishing them? He is, m maybe. I mean, he's he's like 80. He's overweight. He's old. Unless he's like currently just eating healthy and doing. I don't. I don't know. I just know this dude has writer's block like a motherfucker and has self-esteem issues. So all I know is that he gave bullet points to to the the team. So a lot of the stuff that happens in the show probably is still going to happen in the books, just with different context. All he can really say is, don't worry, the books are coming. It's going to be amazing. Well, and then and it's like, oh, I have to write Winds of Winter, but let me write the entire Targaryen history first uh, so you can have a new show, HBO. And let me write this entire other history about the Starks first so that maybe you can have a show there too, I guess. But they're like... It's like, dude, just please write your foot. Like, finish your books first and then do all this shit. And then also Elden Ring lore. <laughs> yeah, that was probably another thing where it's like, oh, let me write the lore to this world first that you can then make a game out of. That still, like... I, I would kill to have FromSoft <laughs> make, like, the Game of Thrones game. I, I've said this, and or at least I've thought about this, that I'm like, you know what? I know it wouldn't make sense. But honestly, if you could give me like an RPG where I play as Jon Snow, and even if even if it like and you have and give me an option where it's like this is the canon playthrough, or give or, me like a like a settlement. Give like, me a what if where Ned never died. Like well, give me well, a rim world, say, but I just have to like maintain and build walls and send out people to tower defense for the wall. Well, I was, I was gonna say like give me like a an RPG where it's like like Baldur's Gate style where it's like. Oh yeah, let me change the history of Westeros. Maybe yeah, Ned doesn't die because I made a decision here, or maybe like John doesn't go to the Wall, or or th we kill Theon early. You know what I mean? Like, give me options where it's like, let me let me change the fate or of Westeros. Ramsey wins. <laughs> <laughs> I love your I love your even after all this shit. You're like no. no the other day though, he like when we were watching, he was like, "What's that dude's name?" And I was like, "Oh yes, he forgot." <laughs> yeah, like with everything that's happening now, like Ramsey is just a drop in the bucket. But I loved every minute with a him tear in the rain while he was here. Yeah, he he was. I mean, I I think I love the idea too, though. Thematically, him and John, how one is like Ramsey is the most like ambitious cutthroat bloodthirsty motherfucker like when he kills his own dad i was like arrow here we go and then just lets the dogs eat his mom and his his brother and he's just like he's just staring at it just like hmm. you know i'm like i'm like you motherfucker and then they go over to john and he's just like i want to help people i want to do the right thing i want this and you're like and then and then yeah it's like oh here's my sister you like immediately ramsey becomes a problem when it's like Oh yeah, what he did to, to Sansa and what he's doing to our home and like Rickon is dead. Or, or with I also really like though when <coughs> when Sam shows back up to Winterfell and John was like, I didn't think I was going to see you again. Yeah, I I'll, forgot because I was like, oh yeah, they see each other, but I was forgetting the context of he he didn't even ask for Sam. He's like, he's doing his thing at the Citadel. Like I'm not going to see him again. I'm probably going to die. Like I hope he does well. And he brings Gilly, Sam Jr. and ugh. I think I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I think the Gilly Sam relationship is just probably like it's the healthiest relationship in the whole fucking show. Yeah, for like, sure. Like when you look at everything else, like because you could argue like, oh, well, what about this person, this person? And it's like, well, there's like twinges of manipulation, grooming. Something's here. Something's here. It's like, man, nothing. Like even even Ned and Caitlyn. It's like, oh yeah, Caitlyn was meant to marry 
the, the brother I also died. I have to bring up they they have that one shot where it's like they're all lined up for battle before the Night King shows up and then Ghost like walks up next to Jorah and I was like oh Ghost came back <laughs> yeah he just kind of shows up yeah, yeah. he, just he knows where up. he's needed yeah. we were like there's this whole timeline of like Ghost working behind the scenes in every in every like scene that you're like he does the cut like cuts it like back. cuts the uh, King's Landing and he like unties jo- uh, Tom and shoelace and he yeah. trips out the window <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's helping Sam do the surgery on. Uh, did I did did I him, like scalpels? And yeah. Shit. Did I send you the the meme where it's like uh, it was about Tommen, but it's it's Kratos stepping off the cliff uh, to that. Uh, he was to a that, fairy like, rock song. Yeah, and he just like steps off it's like da na na and he's just falling to his death. And it's like Tommen like two minutes after getting a hand job from Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go up from there. <laughs> Honestly, you can't. Oh, yeah. I didn't ask you because we didn't talk about this. How'd you like Cersei blowing up the fucking church? That was crazy, but in character. I, w- I knew she was going to do it. And then I was like, the High Septon is not going to let anybody leave. So they're all just going to die. You just, you well, just like, see, you just see me, Marjorie like, is, and Loras is, standing is, there. Is like stoked about destroying the High Septon but, or the High Sparrow. But then I'm like, we're losing Marjorie and... That sucks. Yeah, I fucking love because Marjorie. I actually like other her being hot. Like, she is a good character. Yeah, she she was playing the game really well. Yeah, I really like the scene with because I love the that was like the antagonist to Cersei. Like, I love yeah, that she, she was the only real like counter for Cersei's yes. bitchy wit. Yeah, and then and then Cersei ends up winning just by like sheer like a bomb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she literally nukes and is like. Oh, uh, like she's like, like she said. I drink too early. <laughs> 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 I love the scene with the grandmother though, of their house, and Jamie's like, I brought you some poison so it can be fast. And then she's like, Are you sure this will like? Is this really poison? And he's like, Yes, I guarantee you. And then she drinks it, and she's like, By the way, I killed Joffrey. He was a little pussy ass bitch. Like guys. I hate. He's like, I didn't think it would, it would be so like gruesome when your son died. You know, I didn't mean it to be like that. You know, I just just couldn't stand to have Marjorie marry somebody like that. And you could see the realization and hatred in Jamie's <laughs> eyes. It's, and then she was like, please tell Cersei for me. Yeah. You're like, ooh. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I need these. Especially a- after all the speculation. And the show kind of makes you want to believe that it's Littlefinger. Yeah. I mean... Well, Littlefinger, it okay. I need to I, I need to keep asking this because like I don't know what's book canon and what's not. Isn't it like Littlefinger is basically the one who killed John Aaron and then in yeah. the in the show? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay, I'm pretty sure. I, I think that might be book canon as well. But um, and then he's like, I I'm the ruler of the Vale. You have to protect me. And they're like, Nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, and because that's the, the guy who's like Lisa the captain yeah. has hated him from the beginning, and then he was like. Seeing this unfold, it was like, oh, nope, uh, yeah, I'm not standing up for you. I'm not commanding the Knights of the Vale to do shit. I like, well, also the idea just too, like, through Sansa, the Vale Knights are probably down for Winterfell now, too. Like, that's, that's another thing. When you, when you really think about how powerful the North is with Jon and Sansa there, they are their own kingdom. Yeah. And then they have the Vale through her. Where they're like, they're, they're golden. They don't need anybody. They could easily just say, hey, yo, fuck the Seven Kingdoms. We out. But Daenerys probably wouldn't like that. She'd be like, no, no, no. I want the Seven Kingdoms. I mean, Daenerys is the only counter to the Vale. Because the Vale, they have that, like... They, yeah. The, 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 the valley the that they have... The only thing that they have is their positioning. And then you can beat that with Dragon. Point. Yeah, but other than that, they're, like, yeah. set, though. Like, they have they, that valley like, yeah, where the most... they have archers along the whole thing. And they're like, this is the only way to get into the town. And then they have, yeah, the moon... <laughs> that, the moon door. That scene of... Well, I'm here to deliver this bitch to her aunt. Sorry to say, uh, aunt is passing. Or I just die laughing. I, I remembered. <laughs> I remember when we were watching that. I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if like her body just fell directly in front of her? <laughs> it was, bro, that shit is so funny. Ar- Arya, I think she's yeah. I think I, I, to me it goes John, Arya. I, I'm gonna be honest, Jora, bro, it's Jamie. Jorah's up there. I think John Arya Jamie is my top three. No, dude, John, <laughs> Davos, and and Tormund. 
Or my, I, I, my top. I'm gonna be oh, honest. and the Hound. I'm going to be honest. And the Hound. I put, I put like, by association, Davos and Tormund are in there with John. Because, like, when John, like, that, at, at one point, that just becomes the Jon yeah, Snow crew. But Davos crew. Is, is, is really, <laughs> is when you really get down to it. Because I agree, like, all the boys around John just go with John. It's the group. But da- Davos yeah. stands out from the rest. He, he, he Well, Davos has, like, an Odyssean, like, hero's journey through the whole show. A hundred percent. Like, it's, it's so when you, insane when you first the shit And then, like, he through. just, like, has, a, even though he's, like, a, it's, he, like... Because Tyrion is able to talk his way through a lot of stuff. But Davos is so, like, he does the same thing where he, like, talks his way in and out of stuff. But it's it's, it's different. It's, it's better less... than Tyrion in a way because with how soft-spoken he is. I was say, Davos isn't, like, harsh wit. It's more, like, almost Sincerity, like a sincere, almost. like... Yeah, it's so... It's, it's... Sin- it's sincere smart versus, like... Like, he doesn't think he's the smartest in the room, but he has knowledge. Tyrion thinks he's the smartest one in the room, and he can prove it. But it's, like... You, you, I, I would feel more compelled Dumb. to believe Davos. Davos than Tyrion. Is, the, is the fucking goat, dude. I, at what point in the, the show? The difference between Davos and Tyrion is that story about uh, the U.S. spending millions of dollars to make a pin that works in space, and then Davos is the Russians using pencils. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, at what point did you, when you were watching the show, you're like, damn, this Davos guy is surviving a lot longer than I thought he would. Like, uh, when, when he gets up on the island. Like after the, I was gonna say Blackwater. after after yeah. Blackwater, it's clear it's like his son died and everyone else on the boat died, and it was just him and um, Stannis. He, mm-hmm. From that point on, I'm like, all right, because I I full thought he was gonna die at some point. Like he was he was one of those I pegged early where I was like, he's gotta die. Like I feel like he's dying, and then like just keep seeing him go on and go, on. and then finally he's in the north, and I'm like, oh shit. I'm like maybe, he, and then the Jon Snow shit, and I'm like, oh shit. Like yeah, I season six he becomes like one of my favorites because like there's which, also a scene. I think that, part of it was it because I thought he was gonna die way before that, but like by season six I'm like, he deserves it. Like, there's, he's, there's a scene in season eight that we just saw before the battle where he's like doing soup kitchen stuff, feeding all the troops, and this little girl with a scar on her face comes up, and that felt like a good mm. like wrap for Davos's journey. Did you uh? So I I have my problem. Yeah, the girl was like, I don't know whether to fight with my brothers. Like, I want to fight, or like, should I go into the crypts? And he's like, there are people that need you down in the crypts. And she goes, I'll defend them. That was so sweet. There, I have I have my daughter's name. Shireen. Fucked. Absolutely fucked. And then. The it red woman shows up again, and Davos is like, I'm going to fucking kill you right now. Literally, he like he sees her, goes around to meet her at the other end of this. Like, and he's already got his sword yeah. drawn. <laughs> he's like, I, I he's like hyperventilating. The next time I see you, I will kill you. And she's like, we're all going to die. And then... Then no, after she the, says, "I'll be dead before the dawn." Yeah, and then and then after the after the battle happens, he sees her again. Is like, "All right, time to die, bitch." And she's like, "See you later," and just takes off her robe and walks out into the snow. Takes off her necklace, turns into an old lady, and dies. And he's like, "Okay, cool." He's like, <laughs> but he was still ready. He was like, he was about to be my, like, the, oh, my word is my bond. Yeah. No, I um. Oh fuck! What was I gonna say? Um. Ah, oh, fuck, I missed it. Um, is it Red Woman Davos? Yeah, I lost it. Oh, well. well, you know, we've been watching a lot of stuff late at night. Did we talk about aliens? Late at night. Late at night, and, you know, sometimes Cheesecake. Really I get night. sleepy, and there's there's a thing that we love that helps me not be sleepy. Gay sex. No, it's, it's Dubby, our favorite sponsor. We, uh, <laughs> Dubby's great. You get jitterless energy from... Great natural <laughs> coffee extract, and uh, if you use code Take It Sleazy at checkout, all one word, you'll get ten percent off. Help us out, and uh, the website is w.gg. If you want some jitterless energy, it's really good. No artificial colors, coffee extract, it's good stuff. And right now, that's also the best way to support us. That's true. And liking and subscribing on our YouTube channel, we're blown up there. And uh, yeah, anything else, boys? Um, I did have one because we got sidetracked, but I there's another game I'm playing alongside Alan Wake too. And have you guys played played a Plague Tale? No, but I know it's good. Like it seems like it's sleeper hit. So I I had played a Plague Tale uh, Innocence. I never finished it, and then I I never got to play Requiem 
which was the sequel that everybody apparently was like a sleeper hit last People year. People were raving about yeah. it. Yeah. And so I'm playing Innocence and I'm like, because you know, I was telling you like, oh, I just want some like dark medieval shit and mm-hmm. this is that. People and were raving about the amazing. rat physics. <laughs> yeah. Well, even, even in this first game, like it's like, this is like a 2016, 2017 game. And I'm like, this is like, I did watch really a deep good. dive video about the programming of the rat physics of the, how do you program like in thousands of rats? Yeah. And it was really interesting how they programmed it. It it has been really fun and really tense because there's moments where it's like, oh, you picked a stick off of the ground, this stick will burn out, and you see the other thing you have to light on the other side, and all these rats, and I'm like walking, and when you hold a stick and you're holding your brother close, you're walking so slow, and I'm like, fuck, 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 and I'll it it. it I love it get, when they can create tension yeah, through gameplay. It it is very tense, and then all you have to defend yourself is like a slingshot. So, like, anytime you have to get into an actual fight, it's it becomes, like, I'm a child. I'm a, like, 13-year-old like girl with the sword. V- versus a dude in armor and a fucking claymore. And it's like, oh, yeah, swing swing the, the slingshot to knock his armor off and then hit him in the head to kill him. And you're like, oh, shit, and he's moving fast where it's like, man, if you don't get that slingshot hit in right, it's, it yeah, the fights are tense because you're outmatched. Uh, anytime the game is like, oh, you're being chased, you're like, fuck, I gotta run. And it's like constantly like, God, I hope I don't take the wrong turn and get dead ended. Like you're like, fuck it. Yeah. It does tension really well. Uh, and for, a, I, for, again, I think 2016, 2017 game, it looks pretty good. But again, I'm playing on the Xbox, so it's getting like a hella AI upscaled for, for it. But it's, it's very good. I want to try them someday. I just have so much other shit to try to get through. They're relatively short. Like I've been, I've been rocking through the chapters pretty easy. Like I get, I, I might finish it before Alan Wake too, honestly. So, so maybe after I'm done with Death Stranding and after I beat uh, the first Hellblade, which I've been putting Have you off. Not and Armored it? Core. Nope. Yeah, Dude. Armored Core. Fuck. Hellblade. So I I gotta say this, and Hellblade's gonna be one that you gotta play, but you have to have headphones. Like, on my Xbox, on my Xbox, headphones. I have those really nice wireless yeah. Lucid Sound ones, which are like the, the seven point one. Like internal speakers are dope. Hell, Hellblade Hell is yeah. one where it's like they recommend headphones because of the like audio. Like you'll hear a voice that sounds. Dude, the like Raven far away. fight <laughs> was Fuck. horrific. It's I Hor- it, I I I'm, stopped for like three weeks after that fight. I'm legitimately excited for Hellblade two. Be honestly because of the Raven fight because I'm like, where? How are they gonna go? How are they gonna top I, yeah, that? The shit? Raven. The yeah. Raven. What is it even? It you know exactly what I'm talking. The about. reason you guys are excited to beat Hellblade and the reason I'm excited to beat Armored Core hand in hand the fucking yeah. Raven fight <laughs> that's right anyways thank you guys for watching checking us, us out on YouTube TikTok TikTok Instagram. Spotify Instagram and uh, as always take it sleazy fuck the game worse <laughs> do better